Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's still showing the be right back screen, by the way. Oh, was it? Yeah. Now it's going. Yeah. Did you all see this? It should have started the start. Did you all see the start? Yeah. It, 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 it just. Oh, okay. yeah. It just started a second ago. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, this delay is that big. I don't know. Can you all. Can you all hear me at this point? Uh, okay, hold on one second. Hold on one second. I'll let you know when it stops on on because I'm watching it on the uh, on your channel. Okay. All right. Now we should be getting clear. <laughs> What's that? Hell of a. It's. Oh, wait, hell of a delay. Wait. Yeah, with a major delay. It's Wednesday night, though, and you know what that means. It means delays. Wrestling apparently. action. <laughs> but also wrestling action. More importantly, <laughs> we yes, have the Wednesday Night Wars here in much like uh, everything else. It's going wonderfully to start with. Um, no, actually, we actually do have something exciting for you all to, uh, today. First off, <laughs> we have, of course, the Ace as Well Tournament League is starting uh, in just a moment here after we get done with some housekeeping and some announcements and all that good stuff. Uh, but the other thing that I have to announce to everybody here is y'all wonderful people got me to affiliate. So give your give yourselves a, hit, a round of applause. Put some put some claps in the chat. For you oh, all, yeah, yeah. because you were awesome people, and you got me to affiliate oh, last week. Put some hands in the chat. Also, affiliation has arrived. Welcome to the affiliate party, there, Comrade Husky. Yeah, thank you. Yes, no, I finally, finally have that affiliate that I was looking for for quite some time there, uh, which means that yes, eventually here, once I find somebody who was open to for, to the idea of making them, I'll be making some e uh, uh, emojis for y'all and getting those up and ready for you. So if you wanted to be so kind as to subscribe and get that in, then you can start spamming all that goodness in there. Uh, I I may make one because it'll be pretty easy. I'm probably just going to make dog time as a uh, one with place it because it's going to be easy enough. But uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Mickey Cornstarch, I might have to actually get a proper artist for. Because <laughs> uh, I know you all want one of those. Uh, and I don't know yeah, for the third. If you have any ideas for, for a third emoji, by the way, toss those in too, because that's another one that I, I'm not 100% certain on. So. Well, on that. the plus side, that means that we have been doing and putting in some work, and I love seeing that for you. I love seeing that for us. I love seeing that for the Wednesday Night Wars. Yeah, y'all have made this uh, what it is, whatever it is. What is this? What are we doing? It's one of the best. <laughs> it's one of the best nights of the week when it comes to Twitch TV. That's what this is. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the more fun nights for me. So, and I. I'm glad that y'all have stuck with me and stuck with this uh, for as long as we have. We're in what week? Uh... This is technically week 14. You are right. Yeah, week, week 14, 14 on cause, this. Because uh, we just got weeks 10, 11, and 12 up over there at youtube.com slash kaiju. So if you want to catch some recaps, go ahead and go over there. I also made it all searchable. So if you just want to catch the match that you like, go ahead and do that thing. But anyway, this is all Galactic. This is all Comrade Husky Gaming time. All me? No, you're here too. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, in literally just a second here, because we have a match already ongoing in the ring, uh, it's the beginning of the Aces Wild Tournament League, 
So let's kick over to that real quick here and uh, get that set up for you. Let me, let me get this here. And then we get this here. And then we get this here. And we'll get this started. Fight on. All right, if you if you have been missing out on weeks past, we have had our qualifying match for the Aces Wild League tournament. And our first match of the night is going to be King of Endeavor versus Daniel Alara. Pretty uh, hefty match between the two of them, yeah. Both, um, I wouldn't go so far as to say favorites to win, but it's definitely uh, in terms of the OWO talent, you're looking at two people that if they did win, I would not be surprised. Let's put it that way. Uh, well, definitely, uh, you got to believe that there's a bunch of pros for uh, for King of the Deadland, and I, I I would say that there would be some pros for Daniel, but like they're more like cons because he fights like a freaking convict. Yeah, well, there's that. Yes. Uh, again, I'm not gonna not gonna deny that one because uh, the moment I I would even try to deny that one, he'd probably prove me wrong. Definitely, as you said, it's a commentator's curse. Uh huh. Oh, right, he's just going. Oh, nice DDT from King of the Dead. Right there, nice right DDT. there on the eighth. By the way, that is a nice graphic that you done created for us over there. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, our, uh, uh, the graphics department, a.k.a. me, made this uh, apron here for the event proper, so you'll be seeing this one throughout the entire event. We are in the Tokyo Dome in, uh, in game terms here. Uh, so we have a different venue as well, so we should be seeing some fun stuff with that as well. You know what? Uh, you know what? I don't. I don't want to call it Tokyo Dome. Let's, let's, let's give it a proper name. How about the Kaiju Dome? Kaiju Dome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There you go. Or the Zilla Dome, maybe. There you go, Zilla Dome. I say Zilla Dome. Zilla Dome sounds fun. Zilla Dome has a. It has a nice ring to it. Yeah. Shatter Dome. Oh, Shatter Dome could definitely work. Yeah. Shatter Dome. Matter of fact, sounds we're right gonna too. put it up to y'all. We're gonna let y'all be the ones that name this stadium that we're in right now. What type of dome is this? Yeah, don't say it's the Dimmer Dome. Yeah, it's not the Dimmer Dome. That's uh, copyright. We've already had problems it's with copyright that. We and, do that and we don't want we don't want to be dimming nobody's no dimming nobody's lights. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Meanwhile, on the ring here, we have Daniel here going after Kitty's mask quite quite a bit here, doing the uh, eye rakes and the mass pulls, going in for some pretty big uppercuts. And yeah, Daniel does not give a damn about stretching. the rules of masking. No. No, he's uh he's attempted to as to see right here, he's attempted to pull mass off of mass wrestles before. Thankfully so far he has not uh, been able to do so for anyone. But uh, I think it's kinda only a matter of time before we start seeing that happen. I mean, there have been some bloody matches. And funny enough, I haven't seen Daniel in uh, in, in a lot of bloody matches uh, here in TWF. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he himself doesn't. Well, I guess he did get bloody um, in that death match that we had with him and True. But uh, True the last enough. match he he had was um, yeah, it, him and was it wasn't Kai, was it? Who, who was it that he was in there with that he got crazy? Oh, oh, that's, that's actually a good question. Uh, we're going to have to take a look at our records just to try to remember. That. Oh, oh, Dragon Screw right off the apron. Yeah, I think I'm thinking of the, the Daryl Dunn Kai match, which kind of seemed like a Daniel R match, honestly. <laughs> the way that it went, yes, it did. Yeah. Oh, right into this. Of course, doing the smart thing, getting right back in the ring as quickly as possible. Right there, oh, Falcon Arrow out of nowhere. Right the ace. 2.9, nine minutes Already in. That's there. A, almost, yeah, almost 10 minutes in. Got our first near fall. Yeah. And there By the way, all these matches are going to be 30 minute time limits. Uh, if it goes to time limit, just like any of these uh, OWO matches in the past that have gone to a time limit, it's going to be judge's decision. So there will be a winner. Now, one of the smartest things that King of Endeavor can really do is go out. Oh, there goes that Rough Rider. Yeah, drop kick right to the knee. As I was saying, one of the smartest things the King of the Deadly can do is go after the legs of Daniel Alar. Now, while he might not be the fastest guy out there, nor is he the biggest one, you, you know how you usually want to take down the trunks of most of these big redwoods, you do make sure that it's a little bit harder for him to gather any space. And right now, you see the flurry of offense from King of the Deadly just going off. Yeah, I think so far it's his match to lose, although we've said that about 
Arcadia matches before and, uh, well, managed to lose them. So it's one of those things where... True or no? Yeah. Although KD, much like his partner, the current OWO Heavyweight Champion, uh, has a pretty impressive win-loss ratio and has never disappointed in terms of match quality. So this is the reason why I think either one of these men here in the first first match of many that we're going to be seeing in this league uh, could potentially be walking into the finalists at the end of this. Oh, true indeed, true indeed. We just passed the 13 minute mark. We got there right the right rope, big clutch. Just this a two, two count on Daniel. Yeah, got that early 2.9 with that Falcon Arrow. We've seen him put so many people away with that Falcon Arrow. It's one of his uh, more favored moves, but uh, couldn't quite get it this time around, not yet at least. Yeah, going right after that mask continuously, just trying to find some way to get some spacing in. Smart oh, there he goes! Jump chain. Shades of, uh, shades of his sister. Yep, Shane's sister and tag partner, uh, the Nora. Oh! He's planting him right into those knees. Oh, right after the arms! Oh, just a nasty little, uh, stretch there. So you go after those arms, you're taking out a lot of Kingdom and Deadland's power game. Oh. All right, very smart of Daniel to roll out of the ring, and there goes KD just doing his little He's dance. Doing his little dance. He likes doing that dance. He's gotten him in trouble a couple of times in tag matches where he's done that dance while uh, Bookman's tried to give a tag, but so far hasn't gotten him too much in trouble in singles matches. I mean, hey, if you've been tagging for as long as you have uh, with uh, the same particular partner, they already know what you're about. They already know how to handle some of the slights that you have, some of your greatnesses, some of your weaknesses, some of your some of your best parts of you and your game. So, And your eccentricities, which I would consider yeah. his... KD's dance to be one of them. Definitely one of them. But like, even with the oh, that two punch combo just rocking him. Yeah, KD's kind of out on Dream Street at the moment from all these punches, this heavy offense. Oh, the first sign of the. No! Uh, I think it's the first sign of the illegal move, though. It's kind of like rare for Danny to go this long, but only 2.9. Oh! Even with Almost the breast goes over again, though. I'm surprised he didn't try to check his trunks. Running DDT, oh, but Katie's oh, right back up. Oh, right there, the right choke chain. Choke chain, that's it. That's it. The first match here in the tournament, we hit it right at the beginning of it, right even after uh, they walked out here. And unfortunately for fans of Katie and the Los Heroes, Katie walks away with the first loss of the tournament. Paper crossface with the choke chain, as they call it. 96 match evaluation. High match value, almost going the full 20 minutes that we have right there. But KD put up put up a lot of fight. Now you start to wonder if this is sort of like a hangover for failing to capture the OWO heavyweight championship a couple of weeks back. Yeah, I I, I don't know. It's a kind of an interesting concept to to think about. Just some questions that you might need to start asking. Yeah, whether or not that's kind of hit him weird and he's just not in the right kind of headspace yet uh, in which case hopefully I mean he has another he has another title he's going after here hopefully he uh, gets back into the spirit of things quicker but he did get a couple 2.9s he got close it's not like he you know got completely blown out or anything no. yeah this is definitely very true very very true but you still have to start to wonder it's like maybe maybe this is the start of KD being on the schneid. Maybe, maybe not. You know, these are some questions that we have to ask uh, down there backstage. Uh, of course, we don't want to ask it after a match. We're, we're not those kind of people. We're not the tabloids. We're not trying to start a fight with any of the talent, but we do have to ask these questions eventually. Yeah. All righty. Unlike in our nor uh, normal uh, kind of weeks, we will not be going to a break in order to go to the next match because we are going straight into the league menu. <laughs> match and as, number two. And as the league itself shows here, we have the first of the B brackets here, which is, of course, the TCW bracket. In case you didn't see from last week, we have A bracket here, which is mostly OWO. We have two, the two freelancers who got in are also inside the A bracket. Uh, whereas the B bracket is strictly TCW talent. And we will be going through some of these matches here today. And obviously, as you can see, the league is going to go on for quite some time. So we're not going to get all of them here tonight, but we're going to go through them throughout the entire month of March and even further if need be. 
until we have our finalists and our eventual winner of the first unified TWF World Heavyweight title. But one little bite at a time. Karen Bishop versus Cameron Chapman should be an interesting first match for TCW. You ready for it? Let's go. Let's go. Down to the ring, Karen Bishop won her qualifying match, uh, I believe the second week of qualifiers, in a decidedly, decidedly dominant performance. Yeah. Pretty dominant performance, which is kind of strange because it has not had the most dominant performance in TCW in general, but definitely got into this tournament with a Pretty dominant performance, and uh, I don't know. I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if she's kind of a dark horse type of candidate for this. Hey, don't let Taylor Swift hear you say that. Or wait, was that Katy Perry? That, yeah, that was Katy Perry. But whichever one of them, I just know they think. I just know. I just know one of them. Yeah. Well. Oh, there goes Cameron Chapman already starting us off. Nice drop kick after rolling out of that arm drag. Yeah. Now, oh, Karen, despite despite having a, a, a worse record uh, than some of the people uh, in TCW, is still a dominant performer, as we said. She's incredibly strong, very strong willed. But right now, she's getting taken to task by the faster, the smaller Cameron Chapman, trying to yeah. find any way to end this match as early as possible. Probably smart on his part. As I said, faster, kind of definitely a bit more technical, but uh, in a longer match, may tire himself out, especially against Karen, who is definitely known, uh, as we've seen in multi-man matches or multi-person matches, uh, to be able to choose her moments in ways that uh, a lot of other wrestlers have problems with. Well, already that headbutt did a number on Cameron Chamber two minutes in, and he's already leaving Crimson on the mat. Corner, nope. Cameron's fighting out of that. Now, see, oh. that might be the thing that that Ka that Karen uses against him. Already having blood spilling over his eyes. There is no cut man in wrestling. There is no corner man in wrestling. You just have to go to it until the end of the match. And right now, that might put Cameron on the back foot. Yeah. Yeah. We. Uh, it's one of those things where you every now and again see a second or a uh, manager come out, but in the Aces Vol tournament, there is no such thing. You are here alone. So if you're in, you know, True, you don't have True on the ringside. If you're in uh, Alan Demito, you don't have any one of those on ringside. This is just you and the other person in the ring here. Yeah, basically you are Batista. You walk alone this side this pit of danger. Mm-hmm. Where there was no one to follow me. You walk alone. Huh? Oh, once again, oh! we see the brass knights coming into play. Seems like a popular choice here. Go in the ring alone. I mean, you, bring, hey. you bring a you bring a little insurance policy, perhaps. You gotta have Philadelphia's Bruce like check the trunks more often. Yeah, he's apparently this is uh either they're really good at hiding it or he's not so great at seeing it. I'm not really sure which one. We'll have to figure that out. Maybe maybe we we'll have to see if there's been any green changing hands. That I nice Larry had only got a one count. Once again, we we are reporting that Karen Chapman is dealing with a massive cut over his right brow, but oh, that twisting backflip into a penny combination, just a one count. Oh, it's thrown up onto the, uh, the entrance ramp there. Oh, Cameron that's couldn't one, get it working. That's one difference between uh, our normal venue and of course the, the Zilla Dome or the Kaiju Dome as you want to call it here. Uh, that entrance ramp is uh, same height as the ring, kind of puts a different spin on throwing people out to it. True indeed. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's more dangerous or less dangerous to have that 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 place out. Oh, nice rolling combo kick know. in the corner. It's one of those things where you know the floor, as you can see, is padded, whereas that entrance ramp, I can say for certain, they may have carpet on it, but it's not much else. So I don't know if uh, if the hardness of it would make up for the distance or what. Oh, Ooh, that low, low punch blow. in! As as my dad said, right to the ding ding. Right there. Ooh. Nice DDT from Cameron. Lovely DDT. Lovely little knee, knee strike there. Lovely figure four. 
Lovely all around. Oh, this is this is a lot. Uh, oh, oh! Duck the first Scorpion one, got the second kick. one. Yeah, this is kind of what I figured would happen. Is that you know, uh, Karen Bishop would be winning in terms of power, in terms of brute strength, as we just saw getting a two count there, which is a nice slam and pin combination there. But uh, Cameron would be the one who would be winning in terms of technical, technical wrestling ability. I would say in terms of points, he probably is ahead, especially if you're getting 2.9s like that. Oh, but, true uh, indeed, true indeed. But Cameron, too, uh, Cameron too long. Is, is definitely Cameron is definitely a one hitter queer. Sometimes she definitely has a move set where one move can turn the tide. As and we almost did there. right there. Oh, that brass knuckles right to the jaw. Brass knuckles again. Cameron out on Dream Street. Oh, not Dream Street enough though. Uh oh, oh, Philadelphia is down. down. I don't know if that was purposeful or not, but it does give uh, Aaron a bit of an interesting situation here. She can use that those brass knuckles to her heart's content, but right now it's Cameron. Nice exchange of blows right there. Philadelphia yeah, Bruce is rising, rising up. It was genuinely just an accident then. Just had a striking combination, things like that. Oh. Nice kick right to the face. Oh, he managed oh. to get a rope. Party's over. Ah, oh, and the ropes, though. Now, that has been the bane of Cameron's existence. It Some has of the been. big matches that he's lost. Oh, just those knees over and over again. Again, Surprising Cameron going Moonsault cover right on the ace and he gets it. Oh! 14 minutes in and a lovely uh, fight there. Yeah, I would Surprising. say. Surprising! If that went too much longer, I, I, I couldn't see. I could see Karen getting that victory totally. But uh, as I said, it going under 20 minutes, yeah. I, don't, I think it was pretty much just Cameron's one to lose. Yeah, definitely. You could definitely see the change of the way that Cameron has been carrying himself from match after match after match after losing those matches against Martin Valentine. He's definitely going for a much faster, a much more vicious style, but he is a little bit smarter, making sure to get most of those pinfalls in the center of the ring. As we said, getting those pins near the ropes has been the bane of his existence. Having his opponents being able to reach out and break his make his rope call counts is has really made the reason why he's been losing some of these matches. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 that ring awareness. It's the fact that he has all those, uh, you know, flip, flippy moves are great until you flip all the way from center of the ring into the side of the ring, in which case, you know, now it's now it's a ring break, a rope break. Uh, yeah, so that's been his his bane of existence. This time he smacked it down, standing short as press center of the ring, one, two, three, and he gets his first one of this league. So TCW's wow. jumping off. He's a different jumping off with a Cameron victory. And Let's bring it right back to OWO. Indeed. With, of course, St. Alapex and Red Alessandre. Ooh, that's going to be a nice one. This is going to be an interesting one. Do we have the, well, I know we have one gremlin here. We have, of course, the gremlin champion in chat. But do we have his longtime challenger? Uh, yeah, I can we'll see, see. The gremlin, his gremlin champion, of course, wants Red to win, not surprisingly. Yeah, he, he's making a lot of noise down here by ringside. And honestly, I <laughs> I don't blame him. I, I'm not yeah. going to blame him. Like, yeah. if, if, you have, if you have your rival in the ring and you don't have a matchup just coming up just yet, I'd be yelling my head off too. Yeah. Well, I would uh, not Nam's use also, the language, but. Nam's also, unfortunately, not in this tournament, sadly. Yeah, he's he he because his title is not in fact recognized. He was not an automatic entrance, so uh, not in the not in the tournament. He will not be able to be the world heavyweight champion. Whereas Zane theoretically could be, could be. So which would be an interesting one, unified, artificial <laughs> gremlin champ versus the actual TWF world heavyweight champ. That would be a hell of a thing. I'm not I'm not sure if that would be a hell of a good thing or just a hell of a thing. But anyway. Before we get to, before we start talking big, that big though, we gotta do this match. Yeah.
however you want to call him, the Matt Gremlin, the Atomic Waifu, the Shish Kebab Shark. I don't know how you want to call him. It's Zane Alapex bringing himself down to the ring. I don't think anyone's called him the Shish Kebab Shark. I'm going to start. All right. I mean, he's weird enough. He probably would enjoy that. I, I... And here's Red. Fan favorite, if only because, of course, everybody loves... Oh, right here. Red theme song. One of the best parts of his game gets the crowd jumping. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. How do you not... This is a jaunty tune. It's and I don't use jaunty... I do not use jaunty loosely. Yeah. Now, Red Alessandri got in with a surprising victory over Denora Alara. A member yeah. of True, Zane Alapex, definitely has some momentum, even though he's lost it by continuing to go after that unrecognized, unsanctioned, unofficial, undisputed, unified Gremlin title made yeah. from Etsy. Yep, 25 bucks on Etsy from a GoFundMe. I think we decided maybe it was an Indie Go Go. I don't know, one of those sites. One, one of those. I think it might have been a, one of those Russian ones that, that steals your identity. Yeah. Well, they got the $25, clearly, because uh, they actually bought something. Someone gave them 25 bucks at least. Maybe. I don't know. I anyway, don't want to yeah, find so out that, that Nam has been selling some bad picks online. Right. Uh, hmm, hmm. Well, <laughs> we won't go there. But, uh, yes, Zane, unfortunately, has had quite a number of good matches inside of sort of the official bounds of uh, the OWO. But the parts like, kind that of actually his, matter. Yeah, kind of ruined his win-loss ratio by going for an unofficial title in still kind of official sanctioned matches. Although, you know, backstage in kind of a training room environment, they still counted towards his win-loss record. We decided that at the very least. You know, oh, if he's at gonna, the very least. If uh, you know, but, if Noms is going to go around claiming to be some form of a champion, at the very least, they have to be official matches. True enough. True enough. Now. What we have with Red Alexandre, he may have the mask, he may have the lucha style, but he is not just a strict high flyer. He does have a good and balanced mat game. Same thing for Zane Alapex, a nice yeah. ground and pound game. That's one of the reasons why I like him as being a member of your team. But there he goes right there with the Anaconda Vice yeah. on Red Alexandre, just to, right right as I said it, a nice mat oh. game. Oh no drop. One of, uh, one of the crowd favorites for, from uh, Zane there. But yeah, they don't call him the Matt Gremlin because he uh, isn't good on the mat. Or because his name is Matthew. Yeah, neither one of those. Oh, a slap oh. from behind, but he immediately Ooh. gets caught up with a drop toe hold. A little bit of a disrespect there. Not non coming that's one, from. That's one of the things. Yeah, so saying I'm not coming from the little Gremlin. Uh, he totally is okay. a disrespectful little gremlin, uh, uh, a guy that like I would really love to train with myself if I was still back in the game. Yeah, yeah, he definitely is. Weirdly, you know, still kind of a fan favorite. He will still love him for what he is. I think it's just because it's so weird. Um, but definitely has kind of uh, what you would consider in most cases heel tendencies. You know, spits fire at people, taunts them, does that. Oh no drop. Oh no drop. <laughs> uh, oh, rolling knee bar. Yeah, but he's just so so good at throwing people into these situations where, you know, that rolling knee bar, that these arm bars, the anaconda vice, you know, he is, every time you think you've seen just about everything from him, he throws something else at you. And I think it's just I, from that from that perspective, the fans have just loved watching him. I think that's what it is. I think he's very pure about who he is as a person, as a wrestler, as a performer in the ring you're not going to get him trying to you know fake the funk as my dad would say he's yeah. definitely going to wear his heart on his sleeve and show you exactly the kind of person he is so like if he does end up slapping you from behind or ripping at your mask you don't you expect it you 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 need it to happen yeah yeah pretty much at that point the only one you have to blame is yourself oh speaking of oh, he finally got the, he finally got the dialogue right off he's sitting up there yeah he's he almost set that, set that uh, mask on fire. Thankfully, Red Alessandri probably looks like he came came prepared with something fireproof. Although, unfortunately, you know, that fire doesn't 
didn't have anything to stop it from blinding him, so it still took it to the eyeballs. Oh! oh! Kamagoye right Kamagoye there! Goye right in the middle of the ring, but Zane just right oh, back at it with this first pig. That's a two count, though. That fierce headlock near the corner. Yeah, one of Red's what, favorites. If you're ready out of the sun, you don't know what you do because that fire definitely does have a lasting effect on your vision, on your definitely on your momentum and on the way that you move about the ring. Oh, well, I, I tell you what you do. You tap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There it is with Zane. It's snap, nap, or tap. Yeah, no, I agree with you. you know, I would agree with you even if Red didn't uh, tap right there. Thrown into the Nagata Lock, one of Zane's favorite little moves there. Doesn't surprise me that it finished off this match, especially after getting burned in the face like he did. And yeah, unfortunately, Red, he 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 got in here with his first ever win in OWO. But uh, starting off the tournament, like, unfortunately, I have to say it, like Red normally does, which is on the losing end. So. You know, honestly, I don't blame him. Uh, you know, get yourself caught up in a, in a move like the Nagata Lock. That's already going to be painful. And then when you've got your face blinded by the fire and you can't figure out where mat awareness, ring awareness is one of the most important things that they teach you in the dojo. Oh, sure. And if you aren't able to reach out and grab the ropes and break the hold, you're just left just feeling the pain. So your only choice, if you can't break out of it, is just a tap. You can live to fight another day. His, his time in the league is not over. So I no. figured he just he made a decision and said, you know what? I will tap and move on. Yeah, fight again. Yeah, yeah that, that that may be it. I mean, you know, he may be going into this smarter than we even we are here, thinking, you know, uh, 11 minutes in, the one third of the total match, possible match length, it could go all the way to 30. But, you know, that's 30 minutes of you being blinded, being stretched, being thrown this way and that way. You know, if, if that's the uh, end that you're going to get, if you, if you feel like you're probably having a good chance of losing anyway, might as well make it short, and that way you can continue down this league without uh, without the cumulative injuries. There you go. That's 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 the part right there. You don't want to walk into the next match, whoever it might be, with uh, you know strained ankles, uh, uh, torn tendons, anything like that. And you know that Zane would definitely do it. That's the kind of guy oh, yeah. he is. He would definitely make sure that there's a snap if he doesn't make him tap. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, I I would agree with that one totally. So, well. Hopefully he comes back at the second one with a better performance, but uh, until then, moving on to our next B, B block uh, match, we have Martin Valentine versus Jeff Sue. Oh, this is going to be a real good one right here. Going to be an interesting one, definitely. Martin Valentine, a man who has uh, had some really good luck against not only Cameron, but just about everybody he's faced. I don't think he's really had much of any losses inside the TCW yet. Versus Jeff Su has been on a roll, a crazy roll with uh, partner Lee Zhu as uh, kind of the new tag team, favorite tag team of the Fallen, going what, something like four and out victories in the last couple of weeks? Like, yeah. yeah, crazy run of victories going from just kind of the Fallen who, you know, had Frank Silva, had some pretty good singles uh, competition wrestlers, but never near their tag team was not the greatest. Just being honest. Uh, but hey, no, they, no, no they, lies there. They found their stride, definitely. It so you know they've gone up against uh what what would have been considered better people, better or better tag teams at the very least, uh, and won considerably. Let's see how they do in this tournament. I don't know if it's punk. I don't know if it's goth. I don't know if it's emo. But Martin Valentine definitely has a style that is very dark and foreboding if you give him a chance. Yeah. Definitely that. And I also am not really sure, you know. The song's kind of, I would say kind of more on the line of uh, emo. It's a classic, you know, well, speaking of songs, I forgot about I forgot What would you call this song, song there? I would call it really loud. You know what? Every, it's it's kind of growing on me. It's, it's not even really a bad song. I just can't hear myself think whatever it plays. Just shut it. Shut it off. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Do you think that's how they managed to indoctrinate so many people into The Fallen? Because we're seeing a lot of people in the stands putting their hand on their chest just like The Fallen. 
yeah, you definitely have some uh, some fallen fans. Like I said, especially of now that uh, Jeff Sue and Lee Zhu are together, they definitely they, they, there's something there. There's something there that the fans like. That uh, even though they definitely come out and do some dastardly deeds, they are kind of TCW's true to a certain degree. Oh, true enough. True enough. See, one of the one of the hardest things that I have to admit is I don't know if it's so much badness, if it's evilness, or if it's just a pair of people who do not respect their opponents. Yeah. You see what the way you see it in the way that they fight. Like they don't they don't care about the wrestling part of things. They just care about the fighting, the winning, and that's the only thing that matters. Which is why I think this match is going to be so interesting because I would almost say the same thing about Martin Valentine. You know, he's a he's a person who's gone up against Cameron multiple times, has been damn near put out of action in match after match, has come back from that to win what can only be seen as almost like fluke victories, even with his win-loss record, and has done so so much that they're no longer flukes. Oh, true indeed. It's that fall of man, that power bomb that he uses, that seems to be the great equalizer for so many of his matches. Yeah. So far, right now, it looks like Martin Valentine is on the back foot. But again, we've seen it like this before, where he does look like he is uh, faltering. But out of nowhere, he'll hit that fall of man. He'll hit some of his bigger moves and equalize it right then and there. Yeah. Oh, Jeff Sue, though, definitely bringing it to him. Definitely not uh, letting him think about it. Letting him have too many breathers here. Martin kind of getting only a few of those. Uh, yeah, some of these. <laughs> Some of those tricky little uh, rollovers kind of throwing Jeff Sue off his game here. But outside of yeah. that, it's been kind of just a constant battle between these two. Oh, true indeed, because as you said, Martin Valentine is the wrestler out of these two. Jeff Sue is not. So it's trying to figure out you know, the, the greatest way to go after Martin Valentine. Like, yeah, your strikes work, but you have to still win the match. And right. if you can't get a, if you can't get your grasp on Martin Valentine, then you can't win. Yeah. Knockouts are acceptable. Acceptable. We have seen those in uh, TCW and OWO, but uh, they're they're pretty rare. You know, it takes a lot to really knock out a trained professional fighter. So oh, true most indeed. of the time, most of the time you're going for the taps or for pinfalls. And I, I don't know. I think in, in that game, Martin I think has an edge here. But I guess we'll see. Those low kicks bringing Jeff Sue down, dragging him over, picking him up. Once again, that test of strength wins it with the arm drag. Yeah, he's just doing that a couple of times here. Oh, goes for a low angle drop kick and just gets back oh, up into spirit a rush. bar fight. One that he unfortunately loses cover. Goes Sue with a two count. Eight minutes in, we got a two count. Oh, there goes that drive by kick. Shades of MVP. Oh. Oh, that spinning heel kick. Yeah, he's keeping him in the corner, which is one of the smarter things to do. You don't want a guy like Martin Valentine able to walk away from your strikes. Yeah, you don't want him to get any sort of uh, room to think, room to uh, maneuver. Oh, or he might oh, start to pull on shit like that. <laughs> Just stopping Jeff suit down, throwing him down, kicking him in the nuts. I think this is kind of the time where we've seen Martin before you know, where he's come back from a uh, seeming defeat or seeming bad situation. Just soon, not really kind of trying to cut him off, though. Back into a damn bar fight. Oh, yeah. Martin goes down once again. You don't see, you don't see Jeff soon doing what many taunts. He's got it in the, he feels he's got it in the bag, I would say. I would say so, too. Yep. Strike off here. Goes for a kick, but no. Oh, drop, drop kick! kick. Turn. I found the mat. Uh oh, back down. Just a, just a slay of punches. Just a two count. Just though. a two count. Martin Valentine has a lot of resilience. Oh, catches that right into a dragon screw. Oh, super, super kick, kick out of nowhere. Middle of the ring cover. Two, just a two count. This it's is a amazing. nice back and forth between these two, a change of styles. I was just about to say, as amazing as it seems, we are actually only 12 minutes into this match. It's it's kind of seems like one of those matches that's been go going on forever, but in a good way. Not boring, just one of those things where, you know, they win it 
300 miles an hour to start, and it's been consistently that for the entire match. Once again, catches that middle kick right into a dragon screw. Elbow right drop. Elbow cover. Just a two count. Will this be one of the uh, first matches that we have during the 30 minute time limit? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if it's this one. The crowd is definitely into it. Definitely. Two, two count again. We're just about halfway yeah, Martin there. Martin is hard to put away. No wonder Cameron is having some tr trouble doing the thing. Yeah. Martin, uh, alongside of uh, two other people inside of TCW, uh, are also the only people in TWF to uh, have a draw officially on their match card. Oh, okay, that Death Valley the, roll. was a multi-man match that uh, went to a draw after judges really could not come up with a proper decision between the three of them. Yeah, so far here. Oh! Buzzsaw kick! That might Ooh, be it. That might be it. 2.9. No, 2.9! Halfway to the time limit! Yeah, a little of one minute over halfway, 16 minutes, and we have 14 more to go. Jeff Sue trying to put him away here. Oh, Martin going for Managing to step away. One. They're putting some distance between each other. There you go. That flurry of punches. Uh, Loring Martin, that might be it. One. Two. Lay up a two. No, just Not a two a two point nine that time. Martin back up faster than before. Another minute passed. 17 minutes. I don't ever seen them in a singles competition. And right now, they're already turning, turning heads. Yeah. Martin kind of begging off, playing to the crowd here a little bit. Oh, I don't know if that, how smart that was, but he gets, his, he gets his stuff off here. Although, it gets a... Yakuza kicking for his uh, trouble here. Just a two count Just again. a two count. 18 minutes. 18 minutes. Drive-by kick. Once again, change of MVP. Oh. That spinning heel kick. Martin is trying to... What can he do? I Exchange of blows near the ropes. Yeah, I don't know. He, he gets kicked in the head too many times like that, though. I don't think he's going to last for the entire 30 minutes like we think. But then again, you know, like I said, the man surprised me. Oh, oh, there he goes. You know he was going for the follow man. Jeff Sue scouted it. Oh, just more kicks to the head again and again. Kicks the body that time, but still just... He can't be thinking properly. If he ever was thinking properly. Oh, that dash punch right to the shoulder blade oh. once again. That sends a shockwave down your spine. Sends you, makes your fingers oh. and toes tingle. Returns those kicks to the head that time around. Oh. It's pinning combination. Pinning combination, 2.9. 20 minutes. Death Valley roll. 20 minutes in. Oh, running up the rope. High angle drop kick. Knocks him down. No. Oh, Jeff's still fighting it off. Still has some fight left. I don't know how. Oh, sleeper right oh. to the kick to the chest. Sleeper into kind of almost like a PK kick there. Oh. Once again, that combination Rolling punch, elbows. elbow punch. I think he's, I think he's starting to think that maybe his uh, Martin's weakness is in that thick head of his, but I don't know. I Eight don't know myself. Twenty two minutes. Two gone already. So far, the longest match in the tournament. So far. <laughs> super, oh, kick. super kick. Will Jump that be it? Down cover. Not, too close not to the ropes. One. I think it's too close to the ropes. Either that or Jeff Seuss was crazy. Another scare rush combo. Just one, bar two, fight in the middle of the ring. It's not two. even a two. It's not even a near fall. <laughs> they are just, exhausted. They are going 100 miles an hour from the very beginning. Martin, this is your first match in the league. How the hell are you going to follow this up, boy? 24 I would say the minutes. Same with Jeff, too. Back into the bar fight. Oh, cover. Once more. One, One two, two. No. Just two. It says two. The Martin biggest the Martin button. didn't even get a chance to break out the oh. fall of man. 25 minutes. Low blow. Martin looking a little desperate there. I will be two after taking so much punishment. Back into Once the bar again. fight. Just a... 
spirit rush back and forth. Oh, Morton just never getting the better the better of that. But he's also Just not two. going down! Martin. Two count. Big kick! Drop kick! Drop kick. Four minutes left! Four minutes left until we hit that judge's decision. Back into the spirit <laughs> Back to the fight. These men will not die! Jeff isn't even going for the cover, he's too Jeff exhausted! Is, I <laughs> These two men! are leaving everything in this first match between the two of them in this league. Cats have three screw. minutes left. I think Martin's busted open. I'm not even shocked at this point. Back in the ring! What the game? What is Four happening? Points. How can this man still be getting up after this? Two minutes left in this match. I'd say it again, no wonder Karen wasn't able to beat this man! I don't know if anyone can. This... I... If this is the cover... Kick. That's to be if, this, if this isn't it, I don't know... What, it, what the what, hell?! What can put Martin down?! One minute left! One minute left? We thought this might go for the 30 minute time limit, and we are getting really close to that now. If Martin doesn't go for the cover here, it may go. Less than and a minute he, to go. He doesn't. Throw there him goes down. that roll. Oh, he may cover. He may 30 cover. Thirty seconds yep. left. Smart, smart moves by Martin here. Two, two. only two. <laughs> Jeff Sue, I think we've been calling out Martin for this hard-headedness, for his fighting spirit here. But this is a two people have to tango. Oh, and that wow. is thirty minutes gone. Wow. <laughs> Wow! That I think was... they, uh, due to the human game queued up, I yeah. think they're giving it to Jeff. That was a, oh, a unanimous decision, really. That's a shocker. I would have thought oh. at least one of those judges would have gone for Martin Valentine, if only just for the longevity there. But I, I don't, can't argue with the judges. Three judges all going for Jeff Sue, but I don't think anyone can look at that match and say either one of these people really lost that was you know we might crazy. have to we might have to open up the 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 sports coats of all the judges and see if they're wearing fallen merch because i don't see how you can make this a unanimous decision i yeah you know what i i, I kind of agree with you on that one there might be some shenanigans with that one but i i until we figure that out for certain we have to go with what they have to say and well, the hundred percent match evaluation, that's a five star match if I've ever seen one. And good lord. I have never seen one man get punched and kicked in the face so many times and get up like there was just nothing happening. My lord. He just got he got that's busted he got busted open a hard way in the last moments of that match, got back into a bar fight and still got up at two. I don't know. You know, it's one of those things where I knew we were going to have some shockers in this tournament. I knew we were going to have some moments where we just kind of like look at it and go like, wow, that, that was unexpected. But I never thought I'd say this, but I don't know who is going to beat Martin. I mean, he technically got beat here, but but did he really? How, how do you put Martin Valentine away? Yeah, it's it, That's and the question. honestly, it's it's also one of those things where Jeff Sue, I mean, like I said, two to tango, they both went 30 minutes here. I I would not have considered either one of these favorites to win the whole thing up until this match, but good lord, did they come out proving me wrong. Well, damn, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that one right there. That was Gee, that, that, that started making me sweat. I was going to say, if that's, if that, you know, we, we haven't really thought of perhaps, uh, you know, proclaiming things like match of the year candidates or anything else like that, but if we ever do, this has to be one of the ones that we look at again. Because juice I, mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna have to move on <laughs> to the next match but i don't know how don't do know you what follow the hell that? Can come up and follow that one mm. well i say that oh, well but there you go <laughs> this is a definitely an interesting one at the very least uh let's marque versus kacha vilcek mother russia versus of course true's uh more mma style uh, Miss Militant here. 
Let's see if we get the same kind of beatdowns that we got in this last one. Let's go. Yeah, I don't know what to expect with this one, but yeah, I didn't know what to expect with the last one either. So here we go. One of the benefits of having a league tournament just like this is more to the fact that you're going to have some some new matchups that you never expected to see. For instance, I never expected to see Martin Valentine and Jeff Two to go at it against each other. But there you go. We had that amazing match. I don't see, I never caught myself saying that uh, true Miss Militant would go up against Mother Russia. Yeah, I... I uh, I can. I don't think that has ever really been on the cards for us. But first match in for both these, uh, both these women. And block A here. I feel like I need a smoke break after that last match. Not I know. I, I, it's one of those things where it's going to be rough calling this one. I have to admit, just before we go in and go into it, because, uh, ooh, that's, yeah. I don't smoke, but you're right. I would take one too right about now. Definitely tough. Goes for the head uh, headlock. Gets caught with the backdrop. Mother Russia. Now, Mother Russia, if you haven't seen her, is just a big lass. She is incredibly strong, incredibly built, and can go surprisingly well. Well, now, Miss Milton, despite her win loss record, win loss record isn't everything. She put up a lot of good fights. Despite losing a few matches in SWA rules, she has won a couple, I believe, just straight up regular wrestling matches. So maybe yeah. that's more her strength. Has won, I believe, one or two normal wrestling matches and one SWA. That was the knockout against Ale Coleman. Uh, that's one, I think, a normal wrestling knockout. match against Ale Coleman as well. So maybe, Ooh. maybe Melissa is Ale's uh, kryptonite. Who I knows? Think so. so Miss Militant there just kind of uh, going in and, and taking it to Mother Russia, just punching and kicks and things like that. Shots to the midsection there. That's one of the biggest things right now. It's it's all about keeping Mother Russia on her toes. You, yeah. you got you to keep changing it up. You got to step away sometimes. You got to get in, dig out, because you don't want her to grab onto you like this and yeah. knock you with some headbutts. Yeah, uh, it's one of those things where, I don't know, I... You know, Miss Milton has always been more of a striker style kind of MMA uh, expert than in a ground game. You know, this is not a, you know, it, it's not as much of a, gra of a ground game type of a fighter. But uh, oh, true so indeed. I would, I would keep out of gra grappling distance with the uh, Mother Russia here, or she's going to start doing things like this. Oh, that back elbow drop! All that weight coming down, crashing on you. If that doesn't put you away, it definitely rocks all of the air out of your lungs, makes it hard for you to go any longer. We're only five minutes in right now. Yeah, five minutes in, but yeah, already a lot of punishment, to, kind of to both of them. You know, we've seen lots of punches to the face and chest by uh, Miss Militant, and of course, well, we're seeing <laughs> Mother Russia go at it now. It, it, it's, it's case two, I don't know what you would call it, not the ding ding. Just the lower extremities, I think, is the nice way to put that. The lower extremities. I, I guess we'll be diplomatic about it. Two count, two, six minutes in, off of that diving body press from the corner. Another back elbow drop. Oh, oh that brain buster. Just that. Oh, and just this effect is stepping on him. Now, I know some people out there in the stands are kind of into that. Do not get stepped on by Mother Russia. No, it's one of those things where even if that's what you're into, I think you would quickly stop being into it the moment those hit you. Oh, the, oh, that knee. And you can already tell oh. that Melissa is completely exhausted. You honestly would think that Mother Russia would be the one that would be brought to slow down just a little bit. But no, apparently not. Yeah, uh, I think... Yeah, Mother Rush has come out here with uh, an axe to grind. She, of course, for people who have been following, who have not been following, this was the uh, first challenger for the OWO Heavyweight Champion when lost to Alicia, the World Tippest Titan. Two big women going at it. It was the first kind of, oh, uh oh, oh, pause that thought. Another malfunction. Mother malfunction. Philadelphia's down again. Poor guy, can't, can't catch a break so far. Not at all. Now, on the plus side, a couple of weeks ago, we did see Alicia and Mother Russia team up, so maybe they have developed some level of uh, mutual respect. Oh! 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 
Just stole her own move, just that strong punch. It's one of those things where, you know, it, it, not even shocking to see Mother Russia kick something like that out, but that is technically uh, Miss Middleton's specialty there. Yeah, now Miss Middleton's got to find some way to drag down. Oh, nice chop there to the throat. Yeah, there you go. Get those nice jabs in. Get you some separation. Oh, man, man. Catch those knees to the solar plexus. Yeah. As you can see, strong enough to just actually lift her up with each one of those. You know, Miss Militant's technically, you know, at, at, at her size, is technically considered a junior weight within TWF. She could go for the junior weight championship and all that. Uh, whereas, of course, Mother Russia, I don't think it's, I don't think I have to say it. Definitely not a junior weight. One of her thighs is probably a junior weight. Y yeah. Um, but even still, you know, junior weight, you're talking still 100 plus pounds. You know, that's, that's not nothing to just be able to lift up with your, with your knee. So... Or, or to just continue to take those elbow drops in the corner. She was not relenting. No. Oh, nice another little, roll uh, down. Yeah. Ta I was talking, talking mess about her ground game, and then she kind of showed me wrong a little bit there. But got so far the shots to the section again. Oh, Russian hook combination. That's got to be it. Shades of the book no. game there. That's, she got back up from that. Oh, that Working fools the arm. her arm bar. Right yeah. in the center of the ring, make like she may be much lighter than than Mother Russia, but still carrying like over, I want to say like over 150 pounds of dead weight when you have already been in a match for over 13 minutes is definitely going to tire you out. So even if she doesn't tap, that's going to have some kind of lasting effect. Oh yeah, certainly. Yeah, she's definitely not. You know, even if she uh, if Miss Winston loses this match, she's definitely not going to go out of this match with a. Uh, you know, this is not a walkover. This is not a. It's like a tuna can type of situation here. Oh, true indeed. That figure four left. Yeah, now we're starting to see the effects on Ms. Uh, on uh, Mother Russia herself. But that lariat and that fist drop might be just enough to turn the tide. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Torture and there it is. Yeah. As much as I uh, would have loved to see Miss Middleton go forward with that, it's not a terribly surprising victory here. That end result, as you said, is not too surprising, but going 15 minutes against Miss Militant, that's going to leave you a little bit tuckered out and onto your next match. That we will have a week, uh, a week difference between the next time she might get into the ring, but that still will end up having a lasting effect because you're going to have to worry about your long term conditioning when it comes down to matches like that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's one of those things where, yeah, we. We're not going to be doing daily. This is not like a G1 type of situation where we're going to be back here tomorrow with this. But uh, at the same time, you know, a week for, you know, you're doing, you're pretty much guaranteed to be shown at least once every week. You know, that's for, that's more than what we've normally done for a lot of our wrestlers. So. Oh, true uh, indeed. True so indeed. It's a definitely a different situation for a lot of them. But moving on to our next match here. Ooh. Well, this will be fun. Well, you we saw one uh, one member of the Fallen go for a really interesting first round match here. Uh, I can't. Yeah, I would say this is going to be a, another member of the Fallen going in for another very interesting first round match. Uh, Daryl Dunn making his the first of the two, uh, you know, uh, sort of regional champions. I guess would be the way to put it. Promotional champion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the first one to be seen in action here in the Aces Wild. DC, of course, TCW heavyweight champion against Gabriel Blackwell, the uh, man who I guess has been kind of put to the sideline a little bit. Um, won a, uh, w one of your matches that basically, a, I guess a loser's bracket match, I guess is the best way to put it. Where uh, they had we'll, already we'll call lost it a chance. second chance match. Second but chance. it was a multi-man match. Yes, multi-man match. It was a second chance match. He had already lost the one of the qualifiers and managed to beat two people. Uh, and did, in fact, beat two people, if I recall, um, for the chance to be here. So it will be interesting to see if, you know, I I would say definitely got an unlucky draw going from a second chance qualifier into the first round of, okay, well, you got in. Now go fight the champion, big man. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to see how he does here. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That noise means that a certain Mr. King Dead has just gifted a whole bunch of subs. 
So I'll have to thank him here on stream while we're, while we're sitting here. And right before this music comes back and I can't think of it anymore. Think of what? That, it gives it subs. The what? Subs. I just, no, I don't I, want any subs. I, uh, no, not the same, not the same which, no, forget it. Here comes the all done. <laughs> And here comes the TCW champion. Gets an automatic uh, extension into the tournament. Now, you got to start to wonder, like, is he going to be the one with a target on his back or not? Well, I would say anyone who gets a victory over him might have a chance, if not at the you know World Heavyweight uh, Championship that's going to be for the whole tournament. Um, I would say at the very least a chance, perhaps, at the TCW Championship. So, if only for that, I would say yes. Both he and Bookman, respectively, almost certainly are targets on their back. Oh, true indeed. Yeah, because your, your, your wrestling career, your wrestling year, doesn't end with this tournament. So, you can get a win on either Dunn or Bookman and find yourself uh, losing in this tournament and still come out ahead, potentially. Yeah. Now, Dunn definitely has the much more impressive ground game out of a lot of people in both of our promotions. One of the, one of the better uh, transitional wrestlers. Oh, that lift up knee drop! Oh, oh. That, oh that that's the thing that just happened. Gabriel the path. Yeah. Oh. Although, man, Gabriel kind of returning the favor there a little bit. You definitely got to find. You got to find your edge when it comes down to uh, to Dunn. You can't just let him hit in on you like this. No. Oh, well, so far he's kind of done that a uh, nice twist and twisty throw a couple times. <laughs> That's one nice, of the best things you can like, call it. Do you like my do you like my uh, very technical term for it, the twisty throw? Hey, it, it's better than Michael Cole's blue thunderbum. Yeah. <laughs> or the uh, hitting him with the uh, three hundred pound metal stairs while he lifts up a chair. Yeah. Oh, true, true enough. True enough. Oh, there goes those, <laughs> those elbow drops right there into the submission. Near the ropes, though. Yeah. Near the ropes, he didn't really come into play. Right back down again, but this time actually in the ropes. As we said, one of the better takedown artists in wrestling so far. Hard to argue that when he has gold around his waist. Now, Gabriel Blackwell is the black sheep in the Fallen, while everybody else is a combat star. Gabriel Blackwell, while he is a kickboxing, almost legend, uh, back where he's from, uh, he's been reverting himself back to his old wrestling ways, while everybody else is maintaining the purity of kickboxing, the purity of judo, uh, and their various fighting combat uh, combat disciplines. Now, that, yeah. maybe that's one of the reasons why Gabriel has been having such a tough time. Uh, oh! Oh. That, oh, that headlock driver, that he's might be it. Planted him on, on the mat there. Just a two count, but... Six minutes in to get a two count on that. Still rather impressive. Oh, oh. It was call, hit, calling for some stomps and then delivering immediately. Oh, headbutt from Gabriel. Oh, frog splash. Frog splash, just a one count. And one of the things with Gabriel, he definitely has a lot more stamina than a lot of people give him credit for. Oh, there goes that torture. Oh, that torture abdominal stretch. Oh. One hell of a way to uh, experience that. Oh, there's that twisty thing I was talking about earlier. <laughs> that twisty armor. Oh, that head headbutt right to the back. Super kick. Super kick. And I'll have to take a uh, take a moment here to thank the Raiders who just joined us here. Uh, for all of the people who have not been following TWF, that's our little E-Fed here. Uh, we are doing the Aces Wild Tournament. This is a, a Fire Pro League, the winner of which will be getting our unified TWF World Heavyweight Championship. We are going through the first day of uh, league matches here, and we are currently looking at Daryl Dunn, the man in the black and gold pants, current TCW champion versus Gabriel Blackwell, a member of the Fallen, a stable inside of the TCW about uh, kind of combat sports veterans. You missed one hell of a good match earlier between one member of the Fallen and Martin Valentine. If you want to go back and watch that when all is said and done, uh, I would highly recommend it. 
We, we definitely marked out a little bit on that one. <laughs> definitely, definitely. With the full 30 minutes. With the full 30 minutes, yeah. All these, by the way, are going to 30 minute time limits. If they actually reach that, they go to a judge's decision as that one previously did, so. Uh, I, first of all, I love that recap. Oh, DDT, that, that fake out DDT. Oh, nice little single leg takedown. But Gabriel Blackwell is not having it. If you manage to miss any of these matches in our league tournament, make sure that you go head on over to YouTube. Oh, a two count. YouTube.com slash Hillkaiju, where we put all of our replays up. Just make sure that you uh, keep us subscribe over there to Common Husky Gaming as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hillkaiju also has. Oh, nice coffin drop there. Uh, all of the other weeks that we've been doing this, this is in fact week, what did we say, 14? 14. 14 of us uh, doing this. So we have 14 episodes of the Wednesday Night Wars, that uh, 12 of which you said oh, are up there currently, it. right? That might have been it. Oh! oh. Looks like he was going for and a right Kamagoya there. there, and just a kick to the face instead. 2.9 out of that, and I don't blame him. Oh, oh there it is. Yeah. Daryl showing off just why he has gold around his waist and why he's looking. Uh oh! Oh, done! Uh, done! Done! No! Hitting him again with that just kick to the face. I know we've seen the Fallen do similar things after the match, but I didn't. I did not expect your champion to be coming to that. You know what? I don't even. I don't even blame him. I, you know what? I'll call that. I'll call that a preemptive strike because, as you said, the Fallen have been doing all these kind of shenanigans in their own right. I don't blame him for giving the shot himself. Yeah. Uh, yeah you know what? Yeah. I guess that that is true enough. Pretty decent enough match here. 13 minutes, a three and a half star match from the critics. 88% from our fan votes. Uh, that's a third match here for tonight for the TCW. We'll be going over to very quickly here to the uh, third match on the OWO side or the first uh, bracket A side of things. Once I write down who won this. <laughs> well, while you go ahead and do that, as I said, this is go ahead and do some cleanup. Once again, head on over to youtube.com slash Hyokaiji where you can get your recaps for the TWF Wednesday Night War. We have all of our episodes up. Aside from last week's, we're going to get that one up hopefully by this weekend. Keep keep following along with us because we do also have them marked out so that you know where you can find the match. If you have one of your favorites, one of your fan favorites, go ahead and give that a shot. Yep, yep. And with that, let's move on to our next match up here, which will be, ooh, Alicia Vexing versus Trixie Eclipse. Alicia Vexing, of course, former OWO world, or well, sorry, just heavyweight champion, not a world champion. And oh, Trixie yeah, no Eclipse world champion. Has been having a decent stretch of good matches uh, recently. We'll have to see how they do as well. Good night there, King Dad. Thank you again for the gift itself. You are a king among men. A, a King Dad. A, a dead king among men. Yes. <laughs> yes, and thank you, of course, for the uh, gift and subs and all that. Once again, we have Alicia Vexing, the first ever OWO heavyweight champion, marching her way down to the ring. Yep. First match here in the Aces Wild. Like I said, all these are going to be pretty much the first matches for our respective opponents for tonight. Now, no. What did you call her, uh, Elizabeth Axon? What was the nickname that she that she wanted to go by? The world's hippest titan. The she, world's uh, hippest titan. As you uh, may will see, may very well see in this matchup, she uh, definitely uses a lot of uh, well hit-based offenses. So she lives up to that name. And that would follow it up with Trixie Eclipse, a newcomer, only has a few matches under their belt, but definitely is someone that you have to watch. Yeah, has only a few matches, but they have been uh, going pretty strong here recently. Let me double check their win-loss record so far. Uh, four and one, and is currently undefeated in singles competition. So, not bad. You know, we, not we saw bad at all. Uh, Takashi Tamura take the uh, OWO Heavyweight Champion with a worse win-loss record than that, so... Now, this is definitely very true. Takashi Tomorrow didn't have the best one, but definitely was your second champion. Took it away after a rubber match uh, with Alicia Baxter, a last last wrestler standing match, so to speak. Yep. 
Ooh, big steamroll classic by by Alicia here. Never really put anybody don't away. Be fooled. But definitely hurt don't, people. Don't be fooled. Do not be fooled by the way that she wrestles. Like there's no cap. She is one of the hardest, one of the strongest strikers out there. Despite the comedic style of her wrestling, she will dole out the punishment, as yeah. Trixie is definitely finding out right about now. Oh, Trixie, though, right as you said that, just doing a little bit of uh, showing off there. <laughs> oh, get a punch in the face for, for their effort, though. <laughs> oh, there goes the face it. Only a one count on Trixie. Exchange of blows right there in the center of the ring. Yep. Oh, Alicia coming up tops with that. Trixie back up pretty quick, though. Yeah, Trixie is not, as we said, it's not one that you want to sleep on. No. Like that said, leg back drop, though. 3-0 in terms of singles competition has only lost one match here in the in TWF so far, and that was a multi-person match. So not necessarily uh, indicative of them. Ooh, delayed vertical brain buster. Oh, that dangerous vertical brain buster. Yeah, and that's that's the sort of sort of situation where you know you start to see the early parts of an Alicia match. You sort of go, okay, that, I've seen this. This is that's comedy wrestling, haha. -ha, you know, but how on earth did she get the OWO championship? And then you see that vertical brainbuster come out, and it all starts to make sense. Definitely making some sense. Five minutes in, already got a two count on Trixie. Once more, once again, the verticality, verticality. Right back into this stretch muffler. Yeah, the stretch muffler that, that really puts a lot of pressure on the hamstring, really pulls it out. And as I said, makes the toes tingle because you're messing with the tendons, the joints right there in the leg. Indeed. Oh, oh, the gotch neutralizer. Gotch neutralizer. Cover two count. Just a simple Just two getting, count, but that's enough. It's getting two so far, yeah. Snap <laughs> there from Trixie. In, it's looking like Trixie's trying to find some way to find some kind of offense in their repertoire, but it's faltering a little bit. Oh, there Ooh. he goes. Koji clutch. clutch. Using those big legs to her advantage there. Oh. Catching it with a Russian leg sweep. Uh-oh. We're going to see, yep, the hijack backbreaker. We've, weirdly enough, seen uh, that's been a weirdly effective move for uh, Alicia. It has put people away with that uh, hijack backbreaker. Like, for instance, Dario's Costa. Dario's Costa, yeah. As oh, as I believe. Oh, 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 there go the last ride. Right power mat. bomb. Tricky, though, not allowing her to get any kind of momentum going right now. Katsuger gets that rolling soul, but and then just those close Mounted fists. Punches. Yeah. Oh, airplane spin. Rather impressive being able to I get a, why it's called an for that. airplane spin and not a helicopter spin. Never made sense to me. It, what, you know what? You're never wrong, actually. Yeah. Why is it called an airplane spin? Well, if, if your airplane is spinning like this, you are definitely think, in trouble. Yeah. Well, maybe that's the point. You know, that you're being you're being thrown down to the mat afterwards, so it's in a uh, it's in a death spin. Yeah. Okay, but I did it. But like conceptually, how does that look like an airplane? Uh, nah, well, I don't know. Either way, back into the hijack backbreaker. <laughs> Thrown down to the mat. Lots of spinning going on. Oh, at least doing a little Ready dance. Go. Oh! oh! Just showing off those guns right after hitting Trixie with one hell of a lariat. Oh! oh! And just following it up with that power bomb. That's one way to give Trixie their first singles defeat. Uh, just knocking their ass out on the mat. You hate to see it, but at the same time, you love to see it. The first critical. So we saw the first draw of the night. We saw the first critical, first critical. of the night. Yeah, they, everyone's out here going harder than I would have expected for the first round. I'm not even going to lie. I mean, hey. This is really setting up your momentum for the duration of the league, and you got to go ham or else you're going to find yourself on the back foot when it comes down to night two and night three. So if you got to go for it, go for it critical. Go for the 30-minute time limit match. Go for making somebody snap or tap, as we saw Zayn Alapex do. You got to go You got to go hard. You, you gotta definitely got to go hard with your first match. Yeah.
you know, and, yeah, I, I I didn't see it that way, but you're not wrong. In which case, we'll move on to our next next first match. Oh, <laughs> another well, lot another good one. Nah. Another good one to start off with. That's uh. I, I think you front loaded yours. I'm not even going to sit here and lie about that. You know, I mean, I mean hey, this was supposed to be the luck of the draw. I, I don't, I don't put my fingers on the scale when it comes down to my wrestlers. I well, I'll have to trust you on that one. But uh, this is luck of the draw. You've had some pretty good luck, I have to say, because this is these have been a stat card. Franco Silva versus Prince Rivera. For those not in the know, two leaders of their respective uh, particular stables. Franco Silva, the uh, leader of the Fallen, we've seen two of his members already in combat uh, today, and he would call it combat. And Prince Rivera, of course, um, leader of El Indomit... In, uh, bleh, bleh, I can't speak. The Indomitable Ones. There, thank you. Hey, just put that, but also in Spanish. And you, you'll get what I was <laughs> trying to say there before my tongue went twisty. Uh, both of them here. Uh, do, do you have any other member of uh, Prince Rivera's particular group in this I Should think I gave them a shot, but I don't believe that they managed to make it through. I think they missed out on their chance. It's just going to be Prince Rivera, uh, I do believe. You are correct. Prince Rivera is alone here. Oh, I had to tap out. That's why we're looking at a different match here. Uh, <laughs> Ellen Demito, Casey Martinez, and David Perez, neither one of them made it in. So we are looking at the only member that is in here. And what a member, though. Leader. Now, now be mindful, be mindful. Now, we did have a rule set in place that you will be immediately disqualified from the league if you found yourself interfering in another participant's match. Maybe this was the game plan all along. Maybe we're going to find out that Casey Martinez and David Perez are going to sneak their way in because they have nothing to lose, and neither does Chris Rivera. It's, Who knows? It's possible, yeah. I don't know, but uh, I, I, I would say... Probably unlikely, but you know, never say never. We'll go into this match here and we'll see what happens. Get your earplugs ready, people. Yeah, once again, we're going it's in coming. with uh, that loud song again. Here it comes. I'm just not even going to try this time. Well, I guess I just did, didn't I? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Moving on to a much kinder and gentler song, although definitely fitting the uh, aggressiveness of Prince Rivera here and El Now, in for, general. Those you, for those of you who have not been following, once again, Franco Silva, the leader of the Fallen, our combat sports faction. But Prince Rivera has a very, very particular way about himself. A former mass wrestler in his own right, deciding to uh, to uh, drop the wrestling luchador background and go for the more traditional wrestling style, while uh, his uh, compatriots decide to maintain the mask that they don. Yeah. And uh, also, if you've, you've just joining us, you will know that Franco Silva is probably my choice for one of the better TCW wrestlers inside of that organization. Uh, oh, definitely, definitely. He's got, oh, that swinging neck breaker. Yeah. He's oh. uh, one, one hell of a fighter, kind of can do just about a little bit of everything, and has a pretty decent win-loss record inside of your organization. We're looking at... Uh, uh, in singles competition, a five and three, and the only reason why he's five and six overall is that he has not had the best of luck in multi-person matches. Oh, true indeed. Plus, you know they've been trying to find their 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 stride when it comes down to the tag team side of things, and sure enough, uh, they they seem to have found it. There goes uh, Prince Vera showing some surprising ability in mat wrestling because that's that's usually Franco Silva's purview. And yeah, there it is, as, right there. I was gonna say, as you can see, although going from, you know, arm hold back into a arm hold from another from the different man here, uh, and once again we're seeing, you know, another fallen match and another, just straight up to 300 miles an hour type of match here. Neither man uh, really kind of saving saving their bigger moves for later. 
Hey, as we said, first match of the night, you definitely got to go hard. Catching that middle kick right into an, an ankle hold. Yeah. Well, the Prince of Air kind of getting out of that with, uh, ooh, well, I was about to say with, with a little bit of flourish, but just getting knocked out after that. But then catching a super kick, elbow drop right off the top rope. Now, Franco is definitely decidedly not your wrestling type of guy. He is going to go for these strong strikes and breakdowns, but that does leave him a little bit susceptible. There we see uh, Prince Rivera already busted wide open, but remember, being busted wide open doesn't mean you're going to get the loss. Yeah. You know, it's not a first blood match. It's not a, not anything like that. All it is one of those things where not all wrestlers uh, can go the same kind of distance once they start seeing blood in their face. You know, True it's, indeed. It's, Plus, it makes it a little bit harder to catch those punches before they get slung at you. Yeah. Oh, just folded up in the middle of the ring there. Now, Prince Rivera's got to find some way to get get some uh, get some separation because those punches, those strikes, might be just enough to put him away. Another elbow drop from the top rope right there in the corner, but Prince Rivera not able to capitalize off of it. Oh, it's punch after punch, just just nodding that uh, already broken up forehead of Prince Rivera. Ooh. Another super kick, nice jackknife super kick. cover. Jack now cover, two count. Oh, oh it is. well, we saw it in the last match in OWO. We see it now in TCW, and uh, well, if anyone was going to do it, I would have put money on Franco Silva being the one to do it. It's a knockout for the, the noggin. I can just see the replay on that knockout blow. They just came I out of nowhere. To, you hear myself think, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Franco Silva getting the victory, a knockout again. Here in the league, just a, I, I, I think at one point during this, I said, you know, in, in normal in these normal wrestling matches, knockouts are not very common. And then we've seen two tonight, so I guess don't listen to me. So I mean, definitely listen to you, but don't listen. Don't take no advice from don't, you. Don't take my advice. Apparently, yeah. Uh, at the very least, Franco Silva and uh, Alicia have not. They came out swinging with a purpose and ended their opponents uh both relatively quickly and definitely soundly so not exactly the most beloved match here just getting a one star from the critics and a 61 from the fan votes but you know if you only go eight minutes and you knock your opponent out i don't think franco's really crying oh yeah he told me backstage before this came out he said i'm not here for a long time i'm not even here for a good time i'm here to win yeah and when he did at least his first match here so and like I said, in relatively, uh, well, not relatively, just definitely uh, convincing style. Which, of course, means we're moving on to the next match. Oh, ho, ho. a rematch of sorts. Well, damn. I was talking about how you had all the fun on your side of the card. This is definitely one that's going to be fun here. Takashi Tomura versus the current OWO heavyweight champion, Bookman. Takashi Tomura, of course, the former uh champion the person the bookman had uh wanted against um not the last one he actually defended of course that was uh king dead we saw quite earlier um but uh Kashi Tomura, yeah had a couple matches against bookman and bookman walked out winner eventually out of that so now he has to win in order to think about adding another bit of gold to his repertoire the unified TWF World Heavyweight title, of course, online for this entire league. Let's get it started. Now, one of the more surprising things is I don't believe Takashi Tamora has had himself a rematch to defend his title once again to get a chance to take it away from the Brookman. So we do need to look out for that somewhere down the line. Yeah. You know what? You may be right there, actually. I don't think Takashi has. Um, he's gone against a couple of different other opponents in the meantime. Has unfortunately, you know, he had that really strong run right at the beginning of his uh, championship run and then just kind of faltered. It didn't have the best of luck near the end of it. Whereas Bookman has won it from Takashi, walking out the ring into the ring with it on his waist now because he also, of course, beat King Dead, his partner in Los Heroes still uh, ring for the belt and to keep his guaranteed spot here in this particular tournament league. 
Now that definitely would have been a a situation because I know it never came to pass. But how would we have handled that? Because uh, King Dead already had himself a spot in the tournament. Had he won the title off of Bookman, what would we do in his spot? We, we, I know Bookman would not be happy with us just handing it over to him. I yeah, you know what? I don't know. It's one of those things where, you know, it all ended in the in the way that uh, everyone was happy. You know, King Dead of course still still has a chance of getting the unified uh world heavyweight championship as we saw like i said his, his match was earlier this, earlier today um but uh yeah if he if he came in owo champion and left his partner behind i don't know what would happen there well so far we're just going about we're about to see a very good match this is your first time catching the mighty mighty bookman coming into the ring how would you describe his his wrestling style would you say that he's just a general hero, luchador. What would you call it? Uh, technically, I would sort of like a luchador or a junior. But as you can see from him trying to, you know, cast spells and do a couple other things, he's definitely got a flair to him. As does King Dead. You know, Luchador Stone Ring is not too far off. They're both self-professed heroes, and they live by that lifestyle to a pretty, pretty decent degree here. I mean, you truth, truth be told, I, I've even seen Bookman walking down Main Street putting quarters in parking meters just to ensure that people don't get their cars ticketed. He's yeah. that kind of hero. He's that kind of guy. I and mean, we've never seen him do anything kind of untoward in the ring. Um, you know, he's he's definitely done a little few things that I, you may want to may call uh, uh, yeah, kind of shortcuts, perhaps, but nothing. No weapon usage, no attacking after the match, no you know rolling out to take even a quick breather he's normally right there wanting an honorable fight and normally getting it Whoa. oh that torture dragon, dragon sleeper dragon sleepers again and again there right in the center of the now, one of the one of the best parts about like i know you see that one count going for the pinfall that one count doesn't seem like it actually does any work but really when you pin somebody like that you're going to be forcing them to use their whole entire core to try to kick out their arms already bound to their sides so they have to use their legs everything from their legs to their core all the way up to their shoulders just to try to kick out and that takes its toll over time yeah those things where you you can kick out a one the first time but even if you don't get any offense the second time it's probably going to be you know one and a quarter next time one and a half you know it adds up Oh, two a two count, count from Takashi Tamura after that diving press. Yeah, seven minutes in. Of course, like, once again, if you've not seen Takashi in action here, Takashi known for the Wrath of the Shogun, a move that uh, we will, I'm sure, shout out when it happens. It tends to come out at uh, not necessarily nowhere, but definitely it's one of those moves he can put on seemingly whenever he feels like it. Although, I have to say, uh, part of the reason why he may not have the best of luck in his last couple matches is he never really managed to get it off. So. Yeah, that's definitely the thing. I thought he was going to get a chance to to take out the Wrath of the Shogun against Bookman during the title match, but every time it seemed that he was going to set it up, Bookman managed to work his way out of it and probably rock the one of the signature moves that you're going to see. Uh, the Communist oh, Manifesto! Sort of like that, the <laughs> Communist Manifesto. Russian hook combination for those who've never seen it before. One of Bookman's favorite combinations here. Oh, Trio Woe. Oh, oh that Larry running there. Lariat right there. Double press. Shoe count. Ten minutes in. Third of the match time completed here. Oh, may, may have been going for it there and once again, scout it out. Now, once we said, we did say that this is a 30 minute time limit, which means that if it goes to the full 30 minutes, it goes to our judges decision. We already saw one match go that far. One of the better matches of the night between say, Jeff so Sue and Martin Valentine. Best match of the night, if not best match that we've seen in a damn long time here in, in a long time. Oh, coming to Zenith Fisto again. Coming to Fisto right there once again on Takashi Demore. There goes that Rose Pig clutch. Get the two count, just two count though. Oh, going for Larry. Oh, getting s <laughs> just snapped in the face there. In the ropes, but definitely a way to counter. There it is, Wrath right of the Shogun. Two point nine, but yeah, that only his first. 
He's been known to do that multiple times in a match. And it just starts adding up. That's definitely oh, that's momentum still. changer. Now, now, as we said, Bookman never got a chance to taste the wrath of the Shogun before. That 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 title match. Maybe would have. Maybe we would not be talking about Bookman as a as a champion. Yeah, perhaps not. People's elbow there. Oh, exchange, exchange of, blows. of blows right there against the ropes. Bookman pony it out. Drop oh. kick. Nice little exchange there. Oh, tries to go for a spell. Tries to put Takashi back on the spell. Doesn't quite work. Oh, oh, that a single knee gut, gut buster. buster. In exchange. Right to the solar plexus, driving out all of the air from his lungs. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh, uh, what? Oh, oh just what? Going for going for a big smooch. I don't think we've ever seen that from Bookman. I don't know. Never. I think he was trying to throw Takashi off his game there. I don't know what that was about. Ever it was about Takashi did not take Takashi took some umbrage from that show of affection. Yeah. Oh, uno, As dos, tres. Oh, the fisherman busters. Once again, Rose play clutch. Two, three, and there you have it. Bookman showing off the reason why he's current OWO champion. Kind of a an unorthodox way of getting back his momentum there. It seemed to kind of shift out of that kiss. He just. Takashi didn't really know what to do with himself, and I don't necessarily blame him there. I think what it did is it enraged Takashi. And it, sometimes they said they tell you never fight angry, and I think that that's worked in the bookman's favor. Angered Takashi enough to make a few mistakes, catching those three amigos fisherman busters, and then getting pinned for the one, the two, the three. Yeah, I yeah, I will. One of those things where we may have to. Uh... Talk to Takashi at some point or talk to Bookman, see what his plan there was. But in the meantime, uh, we'll just have to move on to our next match. The B block, next B block match here. ECW block match. Will be. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. This will be a brawl. One hell of a match. If only just because of the amount of to uh quote one Vince McMahon beef in the middle of the ring we're about to see some ham slapping hams all up in here for this match right here Jacob Sapp our dirtiest player in the game to steal a steal a title from one Ric Flair the nature boy versus Andre Tyson the man from Philadelphia who has all the style and all the class maybe maybe he'll find a way to get a win in over Jacob Sapp, Andre Tyson able to just just like we saw earlier, put a critical on somebody. Maybe he'll be able to do it again against Jacob Sapp. Who knows? Yeah, my yeah, maybe. But Jacob Sapp is uh, I think he's the only one in your in your particular group here that still has not lost a singles match. So Ma matter of fact, he has a win over our current TCW champion. Yeah. In fact, Before it was a a sub ten minute win. In fact. Yeah, so it's one of those things where this he's one of the ones that I I, I, I hated to say it then, I hate to say it now, but he's he, I, he definitely not a favorite to win because I don't think he's anybody's favorite, but uh, it, someone's going to have to beat him, and I'm not really sure who that would be. Let's hope it's Andre Tyson. Let's hope. Let's go. Hopping out like Jack in the Box, Andre Tyson bringing himself down to the ring. Are you ready indeed? I would have to say if there's anybody ready for Andre Tyson, it would be this man. As we said, he calls himself, uh, by many a name, one thing that he definitely calls himself is called the Corn Fed Colossus. The biggest man in all of PCW, I think even in all of OWO, in fact. Wouldn't surprise me. Now, Andre Tyson is definitely no slouch. A strong heavyweight of his own right. Oh. Oh, that knockout elbow strike already going for the big moves. 
which you gotta do when it comes up against Jacob Sapp because he will find some way to bring like the pain, the ruckus, so to speak. Yeah, I was gonna say, it doesn't surprise me that Andre went for something so quick and uh, doesn't even necessarily, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's just one of those things where that's good, what he's gonna have to do. There's no question about that because uh, Jacob Sapp, I don't think, has really gone for, I think it was a surprise when his. The first time he went for a match that was over 10 minutes. So we have a 30 minute time limit here, but uh, I'd be probably more shocked than the last draw we had if we ever have a draw with Jacob Sapp involved. Oh, true indeed, true indeed. Although now, Jacob that, Sapp, he is a dirty player and there it goes, that grinding the shaft of your forearm right against the line of the jaw. Oh, Oshigoroshi! Although I say that and it's one of those things where Jacob Sapp actually, actually does have a draw. He's one of the three men that is the only draw in TWF so far. The other being, of course, well, bear uh, in mind Martin that Valentine, was Martin Valentine and Martin Kayamani. Valentine and Kayamani, yeah. Both people who have, uh, well, no, never mind. Kayamani is not in this tournament, sadly. But uh, Martin Valentine, of course, is. We saw him earlier in one hell of a match, as we keep saying. But let me just say it again one hell of a match. You can't say it enough, honestly. It, it's definitely oh. worth uh, saying. Oh, we're saying. And another thing that's worth saying eyes, is that kick to the knee, stamping on the hands, just do whatever he can. Sap is just one hell of an asshole. I mean, <laughs> I thought you were about to say he's one hell of an athlete, but you are also right there. Well, one hell of an asshole. Both of them are technically true, although I would say the latter is more so than the former. I wouldn't call Sapp an, uh, an athlete. Yeah, well, he is in an athletic competition uh, so long as he doesn't get a goddamn scythe out, which he has in the past. I mean, you say that, and he might just end up breaking one out. Oh, there goes the headlock punches. Oh. Kind of so far, Andre Tyson is not Andre. allowing him to get anything more than body on body with these pins. Yeah, since of Andre there, and after quite some time, Oh, just a oh twist. snapping the neck! Andre just returning that favor though, just knocking Jacob against his knee. Just a one count though. Better than what Jacob's oh. getting, but only just. Oh, one more! Oh. One more! That's a brass knuckles again. And it looks like Andre Tyson is busted wide open. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. One of those matches where blood was almost guaranteed. Games. Andre Tyson trying to do whatever he can to put some distance between him and Sapp, walking away as fast as possible. Probably smart. Two count Definitely got a two count out of it. Yeah. Cover after a punch. Yeah. yeah. Keep the man uh, winded. Oh, although maybe not the smartest thing to do. A couple drop kicks there. Yeah, true indeed. True. Oh, well, not not again, not again. Oh, snapping oh. the neck once more. Just the sound of that just makes you queasy. Rubbing his arm against his head there. Oh. Fall away slam from Andre Tyson off the ropes, dropping the knees on him. Oh, oh there big goes big blows, and blows. Back to the chainsaw. Oh, oh, just in. Driving leg scissors. Now people keep on forgetting that uh, that that Tyson has himself an impressive ground game. Yeah, one of the first only. Uh, so the knockouts that we've seen via submission was from Andre Tyson. Matter of fact, it was... Oh, oh there he goes. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, there it goes. We've seen this put away so many people, and once again... And it continues. It continues. The reign of that damn move. It's put away how many people so far? How damn is it count. so good? This would be number six in this competition. Think of that sixth win. We use that cross arm fire, cross arm fire power bomb. Uh, Say that three times fast. I'd I'd ra I'd rather not see that move again. I'd rather not read it on the header where it says Jacob Sat wins once more. Because how how was he able to continue with this going? I think it's just one of those things where it's a combination of a power move and then just cinching him up after that, and it's just it's hard to counter. I mean, you know, that's a that's a lot of man that you have on top of you.
<sighs> Once again, Jacob Sapp gets the win. Gets the Much win. the and chagrin I'm, I'm of just, the fans. I'm just going to leave this screen because I don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> I don't blame you. Instead, let's look at this kind of a weird match here. Oh, this this will be impressive. How Oops. many matches do we have left on, on this night? Uh, this might be the last match uh, in, in terms of the first ones. Uh, we have to double check that. Um, but uh, in terms of this might be the last for both of us. Let me double check that. Um, nah, maybe one more. We'll have to see. But okay, this I, is I, I, oh, yeah, this is a, that's the last one. So this is match number five for OWO that we're about to go into here. Bob Alden versus uh, not oh is no, not Lindsay Barber. Get Lindsay Barber out of there. <laughs> Well, all right, I guess. We called, we called on Lindsay Barber. It was, uh, well. I guess, I guess Bob Alden said he didn't want to fight anybody. He was going to fight himself on Lindsay Barber. This would be a matchup between the two uh, freelancers, so maybe we're not the worst one to go with at the first. But, uh. Lindsay Barber, your, I, I wouldn't say former, because she's still employed as your referee, but one of your referees decided to step foot into the ring. Uh, is, this, is this what you would call, like, uh, uh, defecating where you eat? I don't know. I, well, I don't know if I would ever use that phrase, but um, it's definitely one of those things where she's always called herself sort of the fighting, uh, the fighting referee. Uh, has been, of course, in the background of plenty of matches. But has decided to uh, go for a freelancer position here in the TWF. Paul Baldwin, of course, another freelancer. This is theoretically the uh, a matchup that uh, the only matchup here that we could see where neither TCW or OWO are actually represented. If either one of these people win, they would be an unaffiliated world champion, which would be a hell of a thing. Now, here's my question: Because they're in your bracket, does that mean that you get signing rights, or is it just anybody does? I, 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 I would say it's kind of anybody. It's one of those things where, you know, they're only in my bracket because they managed to beat an OWO wrestler for the chance. So, you know, I would, of course, love to hire the World Heavyweight Champion, but I don't think I can necessarily lay claim to that. Well, here's the thing. If either of them get the win, they will be the most sought after free agent in OWO history, TCW history, TWO history. Yeah, for sure. However short that history may be. Oh, Philadelphia's trying to find his way out of the uh, situation here. He's already been knocked down twice tonight. He doesn't need to be knocked down for a third time. I mean, why not? Make it third time to charm. Uh, maybe. Oh, scooping a slam up from Bob Alden. Now, Bob Alden is definitely an 80s-style wrestler. You're not going to see a lot of flippy stuff. You're not going to see a lot of technical wrestling. You're not going to see a lot of high work rate. He's just going to be the kind of guy that picks you up, puts you down, and tries to get the win. That's simply it. He's hard yeah. at lunch pail kind of wrestler. He's definitely kind of a uh, meat and potatoes kind of guy, yeah. Um, has had not the best of luck in terms of uh, win-loss record here so far in TWF, but uh, uh, people, lo people love a Bob. He's, he's got a decent amount of fan infection so far just from being himself. Everybody, Can't help everybody but has a love Bob, a Bob with a mullet. Oh. Plant Lindsay down there. Oh, nice leg trip takedown. Oh, Attempts Lindsay. to go for a quick leg. Eats it himself. Now, Lindsay Barber doesn't have a lot of matches under her book, so there is not a lot of scouting that you, that you can do for her. No, and of course, Bob Alden, Bob Alden doesn't have the uh, largest amount of matches either. Both of these freelancers are relatively newcomers to the uh, organization, the promotion. Oh. Shades of Ric Flair there. Oh, oh mincing the elbow drop. That, getting an also shades of Ric Flair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, leapfrog. Oh, oh eats that lariat. There it is. That, what was that, a Fujiwara arm bar with a leg hook? Yeah. Oh, is he just working those educated feet? She's known as one of the fastest refs in the game in terms of zooming around this uh, particular mat. 
and uh, she definitely shows it in those energetic legs. Now, because it is a close fist, those are illegal strikes. Yeah, it does have to kill the count of five. Ooh, tilt the world brain buster there by Bob Alden. Going against again for something. Oh, I'm I have no clue what that was. got that, but. Oh, that's kind of like smart a collision. by Bob Alden. He's positioning himself between uh, his opponent and the ropes, making it hard. Even if she gets it to the ropes, she's not going to initiate a rope break. Oh, what was that? Oh, it's a nice back kick there. Scrunching up that leg for a leg hold. Going for it again, unfortunately, seems like getting shot to the head and Bob Alden gets the better of that. Split it on top. Oh, just a straight punch right to the dome. Oh, Cassidy and Cactus that dragon screw. Oh, now Lindsay Barber, what, what, she, she's oh. not here because of the flu. She's definitely no. not here for that. No, she, she want to qualify her just like anybody else. Oh, just that simple kick right to the chest. Once again, putting Ball Baldwin in the corner. If you, one of the things that they teach you in, in the dojo, one of the things they teach you in the dojo is to maintain control over the speed, over the pace of the match, and where the match takes place. Yeah. And I think both members here are doing just that in their own ways. Oh, oh there goes that leg lift uh, knee drop. Leg lift just kicked to the knee to the face. It's not pretty. It's not technical. All it is just a knee to the freaking face. Man, that seems to kind of be a lot of, uh, oh. Lindsay just taking them by nice just takedown. crown kicks. Yeah, I was about to actually point out it's one of those things where it seems to be Lindsay Barber's kind of deal, though also Bob Alton's to a degree. They're, neither one of them are the prettiest of wrestlers and not the most technical wrestlers, as we've said, but uh, they're effective. Oh, I don't know. that was sure pretty. Take a look at Bob Alton and Lindsay Barber. Everybody's going to tell you one person is incredibly pretty and the other one is Lindsay Barber. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the mullet. Off the rope, just a simple leg trip. But sometimes that can do a lot of damage for you. You land square on your back, you lose a lot of that air you lungs. Lindsay just rocking out of the corner, right into an exchange of blows. That's oh. kick to the dome. Just a hell of a kick, and then just stretching Bob, stretching those legs again. Oh, Lindsay going for something, no. Bob knocking him back into the ring. Ooh, oh, playing him down with a lariat. Running leg drop takedown. Oh, Lindsay once again at the takedown to crown kicks. In the ropes, though. Too close to the ropes. This has turned into a bit of a war. Uh, I'm not Surprising expecting these. War. We're halfway through the match. I didn't even take a look at the time until now. Yeah. Both of these, both of these freelancers definitely showing off that they got here. Not on flukes, you know. Oh! Oh, that might be it! Oh, then the lights bomb. No, not quite. Just an elbow drop. The point of the elbow right into the nape of the spine, the nape of the neck. Bringing Bob Alden down. Snap oh. suplex from Bob, that though. Suplex. Back in an arm bar. Ah, oh, and that's it. <laughs> Bob playing a little guitar on the way out. Where did he hide that chair? I don't know. We asked that Who last I time they pulled it know. out, and I still don't know. Bob Alden with a neck hold arm lock. That's what we, that Fujiwara kind of arm neck combination thing with Jig we've been seeing. So, so many of our fans seem to, seem to have uh, crowd favorites that they want to root for, but apparently it seems like certain fans uh, are bad luck for some of these wrestlers. <laughs> well, it, I, I did kind of notice that, but I wasn't going to point it out. But, I, I'm uh, just yes. saying. So far, there's been a couple of our fans who have been calling out uh, ex seemingly explicitly losers. <laughs> so so I guess it's this a, next one is going to be the final match of the night, finishing it off with uh, TCW's own. I, <clears throat> I believe so, and then it'll be one more for OW after that. Only because this was a bit of a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to make sure that this actually goes the correct way. Oh, oh Lee Shu versus Kareem Kelly. This will be a match. Yes. Okay. Use the 
controller this time to hit like the other buttons so that it won't do silly things and do a different. Wait, can you do me a favor and can you go down one more? Because I think we have somebody else beneath them. Uh huh. Yeah. Leaves you versus there you go. Vinicius de Fiore. Okay. There we go. Leaves you versus. So yes, this would be technically I think the last of the uh, first rounds for everybody. Yeah. Uh, in B bracket, because of course this would be what six matches. So of course we have uh, thirteen people. So. There's one probably odd man or woman out in each one of these, each one of these brackets who has not been seen yet, but uh, otherwise we've seen just about every, at least one out of the two of everybody here. Don't worry, we'll make sure it works out. Oh, I'm sure, yes. And it's one of those things where, <laughs> as you can see from the sheer amount of matches on here, uh, we'll be doing this for, you know, probably the entire month and you'll be seeing everybody against everybody at some point. So, Green Kelly versus Lizu. Let's get it out. Kareem oh, Kelly is kind of an odd duck because he doesn't have the best middle off record, but he still seems to be partially a crowd favorite. I guess you would uh, attribute it to the sunny disposition that he has. Yeah. Uh, although, I definitely am kind of interested to see later on when he has to go up against uh, Cameron. Oh, and on that thought, let's, uh, let's put all thoughts aside as his music plays again. Just, just let it wash over you. Just let it happen. You know, you're not wrong, actually. When you just don't even try, it, it's not that bad of a song. I mean, it's not the worst. It's, it's yeah. not the worst. Oh, figure four, jackknife, just body on body. Checking the leg kick that she has. Now these two are, we have been seeing a lot of contrast in styles. Uh, Aliju, once again, part of that uh, that combat fighting faction uh, that they have. Oh, oh, stamping on the fingers of so Brady Kelly. Jacob's sap match, but I did not expect to see that in, from Liju here. Although, the only, the only not really sure you're, not, you're not catching yourself with like a, a pair of brass nuts in the same way. Yeah. Oh, seems to be something she's going back to here. I mean, here's the thing. It's hard to get a move on. It's hard to get a lock held in if you can't interlock those fingers. I think that's what she's doing. I think she's going for a preemptive strike, trying to find some way to ensure that Kareem Kelly can't interlock those fingers on her. Yeah, that might be the case. Oh, there you go, Rose Pit Clutch, immediate oh. kick out. Now we have seen a lot of blood spewed right here. I would not be surprised if we end up finding uh, Lee Zhu managing to bust Kareem Kelly wide open. Now Kareem Kelly is, is more of a fast paced junior, doesn't really have a lot of combat sports uh, background, but Lee Zhu able to do whatever she can to beat him down. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if uh, either one of these participants in this particular match, you know, when you have a member of the Fallen involved, uh, I, I think so far we've seen just about every single time someone's been busted over so in this tournament when one of them have been there. So. Oh, wow, that, you're absolutely correct. Checking the leg kick with delivering one of her own leads, too. Now, Lee Shu, she is... Oh, there goes that arm breaker. And that... Patented screech of hers. One of the most vocal members, actually the only vocal member of the Fallen. Yeah, sure enough. Franco may, may be doing some grunts from time to time, but I don't think he's ever, uh, he's definitely not given any sort of interviews to my knowledge, uh, even kind of outside of the ring. Um, nor has he really said much inside of the ring, so. I mean, the, the most I've gotten out of him is just simply, I want to win. That's, that's, those kind of, like, you're not going to get a lot of philosophical insight from Franco Silva. Jeff Sue doesn't really talk much. Gabriel Black was probably the most talking out, uh, out of all of the members of the Fallen. That's usually after a match. It's the only thing that he really didn't to care about is the post-match celebration whenever he does manage to get a win. Yeah. So far, a pretty even match so far. Yeah. Seven minutes and 30 seconds in. Ooh. Oh. Oh! 
No, this is the Koji plushie. This is the variation of it. I was gonna say a little bit of a modified Koji. Spread your legs all the all the more, using those uh, using that flexibility. Arm breaker again. That screech again. Oh, the shoulder thrust right into the arm of Li Zhu. But sure oh. enough, oh, manages to catch that kick to the midsection. Oh, it's a leg hold back for his troubles. Doing the, trying to do the smart thing and get some separation, but Li Zhu is not allowing him to. No, nah, not really. Seems to be a pretty common theme with the uh, Fallen, especially recently. They do not want separation. Because, of course, it does not benefit them. The particular style of wrestling, their kind of strike-heavy offense, they they want to get up and uh, knock you out. So, obviously, you can't do that if you're halfway across the ring. Hey, yeah, you're not going to see them run the ropes. You're not going to see them come off the top rope many times. So, like, it's all about trying to keep the match in a place and location where you can control it. We saw with Jeff Sue, every time that Martin Valentine looked like he was going to get some kind of momentum, he, he threw them into a bar fight. Every time Franco Silva, oh, one count. Uh, every time Franco Silva tried to uh, 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 go after his opponent, he initially just went after him with strikes after strike after strike. Even Gabriel Blackwell, despite a losing effort, managed to find some way to try to keep as much attention on Daryl Dunn. So I'm expecting to see the same thing from me too. Yeah, and so far I would say we have. Single knee drop from uh, Kareem Kelly. Oh, wow, that combination is vicious. Still, I would say a pretty even match between the two of them, though. Uh, I don't know if I would who I would call in terms of points so far. Maybe a little bit of a uh, an edge to lead you, but uh, I would say it's still kind of anyone's anyone's match, which is a uh, not been the case for a lot of these matches when it's hit almost halfway mark. Oh, true indeed, true indeed. Usually there is some kind of clear. Oh, goes for a kick, catches a drop kick to the knee. Smart move yeah. from Lee Zhu. Goes for the arm breaker one once again. Yeah, that might have been the momentum changer that we, we were looking for there, but we'll have to see. Oh, well. Yeah, and once yeah, more. And perhaps going back into that arm that arm hold that she's so fond of and screams about. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What is this? Uh-oh. Oh! oh! Powerball off the Powerball apron! Powerball outside! Speaking of momentum changers, that has to be one of them. But there is no getting out of this right now, Lee Chu. Oh! Uh -oh. Ooh! Kareem Kelly Kareem showing just... that he's got some ability outside the ring! Kareem Kelly just going for it. Doesn't want the count out, but definitely puts some hurt on these two. And yeah, like I said, at least you had it for a moment there, but I would say this is now Kareem Kelly's match to lose after that beat down. The power nice. bomb off the apron might have been the thing that he needed. Oh, although leaves you definitely uh, returning the favor there. Shots to the head, knocking Kareem out to the outside. Only for a moment though. Well, there he goes. Those shotgun knees right to that back kick to the back of the head for Lee Zhu. And another spinning kick right to the back of the head. Oh, catching a knee for his efforts. Man. Knees for knees. Rolling into an arm two, bar. It's two still too close to the ropes. Close the ropes. Hit combination. Cover. One, two, not enough. We're getting closer and closer to 20 minutes now. That's, and it's going to be crunch time. Uh, the only other match that went past the 20 minute mark went to a draw, and it was a member of the Fallen that did it. The suplex to the outside, though, might give some separation. Yeah, might give some separation, might give some breathing room. Looks like Lee Xu's using it smartly as a, as a time to kind of regroup. She, I think, was having a little bit of problems with momentum. This also, of course, runs the clock down, so it's one of those things where greater chance of a, uh, of a draw than a straight up win or loss. I don't know if that necessarily benefits her or not, that, but this section. Oh, there it is once again. That modified oh, the clutch. The modified the clutch. So close to the ropes, but just could not get it. But managed to find a counter all the same. Shooting star press. Shooting star press cover, but only two count. Back into it. Oh, this time middle of the ring. Can't get out of it, but let's find that counter once again. 
You gotta find some some way separation. We hit the 20 minute mark. Those headbutts are vicious. Super kick. Super kick's more vicious though, I'd say. Shooting star press cover two again. We may just have a repeat of the of the last uh, great fallen match here, Jeff Sue and uh, Martin Valentine. Oh, that deadlift gut wrench superplex. Low oh, catching it, that cross arm breaker. Getting up almost straight into it. That was an impressive uh, sort of get up counter there. And once that again, with the that arm bar, that's, and it. that's it. Yeah. I kind of figured that uh, that might no, have been no, the please, case. Please stop um, it. Uh, once again, Fallen doing what the Fallen do best, which is just adding pain and punishment to a victory. But a 100% match rating. They all went, they went hard on this match. And <clears throat> they certainly did. Rain with a losing effort, but I don't think anybody would uh, look at that and say that he didn't earn his place in this particular tournament. And uh, if I was Cameron, I'd be kind of sweating at this point. Oh, yeah. So far, you have Martin Valentine putting up a really good match. Kareem Kelly, who he initially knocked out of the qualifiers for this league tournament. But then Kareem, of course, we gave him the second chance shot at the tournament. And here he is right here. Now, they used to be friends. They they I, I won't say used to be. They 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 were friends. They were tag team partners. I don't know what happens to the relationship knowing that Cameron Chapman had to go through Kareem just to make it into this tournament. Yeah. It was one of his first uh, victories and a little bit of a change of um, momentum in terms of his career in the ring. Cameron, I'm, I'm speaking of. Uh, one against Kareem and then one against a few other matches. People, once he got out of, the, uh, out of the rut he was in with Martin Valentine. Of course, we've seen Martin Valentine in the ring today and previously. It's no wonder that uh, Cameron has had some problems with him. Uh, but now he has Kareem here, who almost went the distance with Lee Zhu, a member of the Fallen. And of course, we have Martin Valentine, his sort of his definite rival, no question about that one, uh, who did go the distance with a member of the Fallen. Technically in a losing effort, but as we all kind of established, it's one of those things where I don't know how, what planet ah. all judges are, were on that they gave three out for, uh, three and out for Jeff Sue, but you know. It judges is what will, it is. Judges will judge. And up next, we have our last match of the league for today. If I can find which one I'm missing. And that scene. And I do else. believe it was supposed to be Bob Alden. Yeah, there you go. Bob Alden versus I think Inyo. it was Bob Alden versus you. We haven't seen Bob Alden here before. We've also seen Bookman here before. We have not seen Enyo. Uh, let me put up to a uh, fan vote here. We we could put either one of these two matches into the ring for our grand finale of the night. Which one would you like to see? Would you want Bob Alden back, or do you want to see the Bookman back? I think I probably have an idea who they want back, but you know, they could surprise me, I suppose. I, I'd be surprised. Honestly, I, I would not be surprised if they decided, you know what? We miss who some Mickey Cornstarch. Yeah, but Mickey Cornstarch isn't in this tournament yet. You got a point. But Bob Alden is. He is currently holding it down for mullets everywhere. But uh <laughs> holding it Mickey, down for the mullets. Mickey Cornstarch is not in this tournament. He he and of course Curtis Johansson, Man of Main Street, uh, would be, if anything, in our tag tournament that we would be putting on. So Nam says, Bookman, what do you say? You think we, you, should we get Bookman out there again? You know what? And you haven't had a chance to go. Uh, let's go Bookman. <laughs> let's go Bookman. And here we are. Going Bookman. To answer the question, no, no, it is 13 per bracket. So this is a bracket. This is the OWO with uh, the two um, freelancers that we saw. Bob Alden and, uh, of course, uh, your favorite, Lindsay Barber. The uh, the other bracket is B bracket. That's the TCW bracket that we just saw. Now, the reason why we stuck with 13 is because we wanted to make sure that they, that one, that we had every one of our roster members who was represented that we thought, you know, deserved to be represented. And secondly, we wanted there to be enough spaces where it felt like 
if you missed out, you definitely missed out. Just to put that fire under their belly. Yeah. Plus, it's uh, it's it's thematically appropriate for an for a tournament called Aces Wild to have the lucky number thirteen. At least I thought so. I mean, we could have lucky number 14, but I don't know who's saying lucky number 14. Enyo starts off, off with a nice little knee right to the face of the bookman. Now, oh, bookman is in, a, is in an unenemies position. He just had a really good match with uh, the former champion in Takashi Kimura. And here he is going up against Enyo, who is no slouch in her own right. One Man. half of fight money. One half of fight money with her uh, partner, also a member of the A block, uh, Zayn Alpex, who we saw fight earlier. The wannabe gremlin. Wannabe gremlin. Uh, yeah, he doesn't get the title of gremlin if yeah, he, he doesn't win the championship. He doesn't win right? the championship, yeah. Conway's been a fist up by Bookman coming out early with that. Kind of a yeah, surprise. Yeah, he's, he's doing whatever he can to try to put to try to put in your way. When she has all of the energy and you don't, you got to go with the heavy hitters first. Yeah, that's just, that's just makes sense. Is definitely one of those heavy hitters. Nice DDT. We've said that we will see that a lot when Bookman is involved, but it's always true. The the godfather of the DDT. Oh. You you might even call it. Perhaps, perhaps. Though I think Jake Roberts may have something to say about that. Well true. You got I'd say godfather, not actual father. True. Stepfather. Stepfather of the DDT, hey, Bookman. Step, stepfather. Exchange of blows, that, that knuckle part, that elbow right to the face. They're going for a pretty decent long time. Yeah. And you'll get the best of it for now. Momentum shifting towards her, at least briefly. Oh, hero punches. I would say that's a good momentum change. You're back. Oh, already! Reading pain bow. We did not see that in the match against Takashi. Not we'll see at it here. all. Oh, oh the poke to the eyes. I'm guessing it's like you would hook your fingers and try to yank down the uh, the eye holes, the exposed eye holes of the bookman right there for a jackknife cover gets nothing Didn't out of it. Didn't get anything, barely even skin on skin there. That was just a straight up just no. Oh, and he was still with the momentum though, hitting a couple of real good kicks and punches, but yeah, don't, don't yeah. discount the bookman. One one no, already. Don't uh, the book, man, but like Enyo is definitely rocking a combination that I was not expecting from her tonight. Yeah. Oh, book here the oh, counter into the corner. Oh, sumo slaps. Oh. Even one of Mickey Coin starts. We got shades of Mickey Coin starts right there. He's famous for doing similar moves. Although oh, I think D, if I was to guess, D. Bookman probably is a little bit of a harder hitter with him than Mickey would be. Just a simple strike. Here's the thing with Enyo. She's not the most flashiest wrestler. She will hit you with like a strike or two, maybe even throw in a combination, but sometimes that one strike is all you need because I've seen her rock that blast mat, that black mask uh, roundhouse kick and end a match or two. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of pick up black mask. Oh, going for the spell. But man, using it to just kind of get some distance, playing this next move. Oh. Now, what do they call that, that neck that neck hold arm lock? I don't know, but this one's called the Commerce Manifesto. I do know that one. Oh! Shades of Anio's partner there with a little bit of Kokeshi. That 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 oh no drop. That oh no drop. Oh, those knees right there in the corner. You've got nowhere to go. Like get, catching those knees to the corner, there is no give in the back of you. So all you are is just catching those knees right to the solar plexus, just driving all the air out of your lungs very hard to try to work your way out of the corner. Yeah. Of course, we have uh, bigger sort of uh, corner pads than we do in uh, standard competition here for the tournament. So we have a little bit more give in that corner, but it's not much. Honestly, it's like the difference between being punched in the gut and kneed in the gut. It's still yes. going to hurt, but one hurts just slightly more. Yep. Ooh. Nice drop kick, but Oh, oh but just a round, as we said, that roundhouse kick. Roundhouse kick is deadly for Menyo. 
Getting close to 12 section. minutes on this match. Oh, there goes that sensual face setting. This is a two count. Oh. The arm wrench sidekick. Shades of Booker T. Oh, and Shades Andre Tyson there with that nice uh, sort of leg hook. In the corner, drop kick from Bookman. Reading Painbo oh, again. Painbo, but too close to the ropes. No, it's not. No, no. Phil's Bruce calling it 2.9. Uh oh. Close to the ropes there. Can Bookman get to them in time? Oh, finds the finds the counter either way. Ooh, now, as you said, there. if Inyo manages to get a win over the reigning OWO heavyweight champion after this tournament, do you think she's straight up in line for the championship match? I would say it would definitely be it'd definitely put her in there. Yeah, whether she'd be one of the first, I don't know, but uh, she'd definitely be in a contention. Uh oh, what are we seeing here? What are we seeing here? Oh! oh! To the outside! High angle drop kick. Honestly, and he was back up though. I'm honestly he, surprised he managed to miss that big red carpeted area. Yeah, he managed to just get right into the corner there. Oh, oh! Throwing anyone into the corner and getting back in himself. Can anyone get back in time? 16. I know Bookman doesn't want to take a count out victory, but a victory is a victory in this league tournament. Victory is a victory. Whether it's by draw, whether it's by disqualification, a count out, anything like that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, counter. Oh. A lovely little uh, sort of reverse Rada there. Only a two, but definitely throwing Bookman back into momentum. Just Jack knife, knife cover. cover. Yeah, it's just a two, a two count. count. Just walks up and hauls off and steals on her face. A dragon. Oh, sleeper in the ropes, that though. Dragon sleeper, not enough. Oh, cinching in. Once again, the ropes. Rope to rope to rope to oh, rope. Oh, there goes that beat seen down. Seen this a number of times. The beat, and he'll beat down. Well, this put something in, away. Oh. Like, Arm wrench kick. side kick. Oh, there it is. The kind of backbreaker sort of co uh, camel clutch combination. Once again, rope break after rope break after rope break, doing whatever they can to try to do. Oh, oh, we'll go to sleep. sleep. I have to say, it's one of those things where Bookman may be in trouble here. Only gets a two count, but he is not. Oh, well, Mexican, oh, Mexican cutter, cutter into the rain. Painbow doesn't go for cover, though. Into the corner. Man, oh, multi -flip. Multi flip. There it is. Rose pick right clutch in the middle of the rush. ring. That That's it. I was about to say he needed something to change his momentum back in his favor, and boy, how did he get it? Reading Painbow into the monkey flip. Into a nice cover right on the ace. Bookman doing a, uh, a, a surprising one-two outing oh, wow. here. Doing excellent matches both time. Having... Uh, the highest rating, highest rating for OWO with a 100. Can't get higher than that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day OWO can rock off a 101. percent Put some, put some more on the mat. Throw some, throw some blood, sweat, and tears on the mat. Right, possibly. But until then, 100 is that. And of course, that is, I believe, unless you want to do wow. another one here. But that is it for both of us for the first round competition in the league. Let me hit this save button before I forget and ruin everything. I was about to say. I was about to warn <laughs> you about that. <laughs> you know what? But there Let's is do it again. night one of the Aces Wild League tournament. Thank you guys for joining us. We put on some spectacular matches. Let us know on Twitter, on your social medias. Go ahead and tweet, tweet, tweet all of that about what your match of the night was. Because, again, we love hearing from you guys right there. Also, make sure that I know that King Dead really hooked us up, giving you a nice little boost with his little rush of subscribes. But yeah, yeah. make sure if you are not following, to subscribe and follow to Comrade Husky Gaming over at twitch.tv slash Comrade Husky Gaming. Head on over to his YouTube channel. I don't think that you have enough subscribers to make your own YouTube channel tagline. But if you don't, 
make sure that you're following along with them as well. Yep, I think it has a one of those things with it has a whole list of things, but I think if you use just comment husky, it should go there. Comment husky, give me a forget. It's a, it, it's listed as when when I'm offline, it's listed as one of the links. So <laughs> just just go there, and then you'll find right now not much. Uh, it's currently just I think the video about uh, uh, Mr. Nick's uh, entrance video that I made for him that we saw uh, the mysterious Mr. Nick who will be coming back I promise at some point. <laughs> didn't, <laughs> didn't, he didn't really have a place in this particular tournament league, so we, we, he will not be showing up for the month of March. I will definitely tell you that, but uh, he'll be back. Um, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I had tons of tons of fun. We had a hell of a lot of people here. Up next podcast again. Uh, I'll shout them out because they've. This is the second time they've raided me, so I might as well. Uh, sadly, I've not actually seen seen their stuff. I need to go out and see their stuff, especially if you're still here. If you're still here. I need to see your stuff. You were very nice. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, has raided me twice, so I might as well shout them out. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm I'm happy to be affiliate. I need to get you all so your emotes so you can start spamming them. Uh, like I said, if you have an idea for, especially for, this is a good one, uh, for a third emote, I know, like I said, Mickey Cornstarch is an obvious one. Uh, dog Time, another obvious one, because, of course, everyone knows Dog Time. Uh, dog Time. Plus, it would be, as I said, relatively easy to do. All, all I have to do is kind of make something cool that with a cool font that says Dog Time. That's easy. I can do that. Um, but, yeah, the Mickey Cornstarch one, I'll have to find a, a good artist for. I, right now, I'm just kind of thinking, the actually, that's another good question. For Mickey Cornstarch, would you all want a number one emote or would you want something else? Maybe like an oh no? Because I could I could do like an oh no. Okay. Well, make sure to put that uh that question up on your Twitter so they I have mean, a chance to actually vote on the poll. I mean, yeah, uh, I say, maybe I'll make a poll for that. There you go. Say, there you go. Perfect. Say, Perfect. Which, Perfection. Which would be your particular favorite ones? Uh I might do oh no anyway, because that'd also work, of course, with uh with our own wannabe gremlin. And his Ono drop, which everyone everyone loves. So, uh, but yeah, I think that's it in terms of housekeeping and thanks and all that good stuff. If anyone, yeah. else, unless you have something else to add to it, or if anyone in chat has something they want to say or want me to say to them. You know what? I think that's good enough for us. Thank you guys for joining us. Hope you're having a wonderful day out there uh, in your Twitter world, your Twitch world, wherever you may be. Stay safe. Stay warm. Stay positive. We'll catch you on the next Wednesday Night War. Deuces. Indeed. Deuces, deuces.